to say is join yes sir yes sir yes sir connect with this good evening sir good evening good evening hello ranjani are you okay ma can we ask the manohar to present first then she has joined sir she said the sir the red laptop got hanged are you ready now kanna ranjani try sharing your screen ma hello ranjani sir you can go with the next one sir no problem yes sir yes sir manohar she will, go, she will come for the next aradhya one of her is also missing today he joined give me one minute sir i'll try to pick up no problem sir we told them um... it happens sir once in a while yeah yes, technical issues you can, you can yes yes suspend we have to give uh, some three four minutes of uh, <laughs> extra time bandwidth <laughs> connectivity internet Uh, not every place has got all that uh, high speed optical fibers and yes all. yes sir so we have to I always think, the last minute something like this happens yes can, sir uh, next time we'll go only i think big cities have the optical fibers and of all this nowadays it's coming manipal does not have we don't have oh, oh. the so it gets disconnected <laughs> I just spoke to Dr. Manohar sir. He should be joining us. He has joined. He has joined. Man Manohar has joined. Yes. Manohar, try sharing the screen, can I? Manohar, Sharad sir. Sir, John Kechri, Ajay Kanna, Ravi, Ravi. Manu, I will join you. I will see. Ravi Ji has also joined. Yes, Manohar. Make it full screen, ma. Manohar, you will present first. All the best to you, and uh, good evening, friends. I am expecting Professor Lakshman, sir, shortly. I understand he is completing a class in another session, and he'll be joining. We have uh, Arida, sir. After some time, he was earlier with us. I would request Dr. Navin Sharma to also join. He also will be joining us shortly. in the meantime i thank uh, vidyadhar hin kinhal sir from chitradurga and uh, i have uh, thank uh, dr shrinivasan sir from kamtur medical college for contributing today's post graduates today we have a unique uh, system like we have two types of retroperitoneal mass per presentation so that uh, the students get to learn the different types in one go and so that the discussion can also be focused Thank you, Manohar. Uh, you make it full screen and start your presentation. All the best to you. Manohar, you have to switch on your video. Ma, we are unable to see you. Manohar, two minutes. Now, this is good. Important. Chal raha. Jana do this. Now, you just. Rahul, I think that's. Yeah. Just to inform you, Doctor Kanak Velu, Doctor Vijayadhar Kinal is a very senior professor now retired. Like one year senior to me in a government medical college, Bellary. So yes sir yes sir yes sir very vast experience of a clinical and a professor in a government medical college badari just now uh, i requested sir also to come sir he promised I... to come in the coming weeks sir <laughs> okay okay yes yes sir manohar all the best ma carry on your audio is not coming manohar it is not good and also manohar make it a slide show no full screen can, and slide show you can see that no cursor that uh, below go to the slide show app top you can see no design animation slide show go there or at least make full screen <laughs> Lakshman sir has joined. Sir, good evening, sir. Welcome, sir. Good evening, Dr. Kanagavelu. Good evening, Dr. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us, sir. Sir, Lakshman Prasad sir, ke namaskara, sir. Very good. Namaskara, namaskara. Sir, namaskara. Yes. Nice to have the people like you around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Manohar, you go to the top. Home, insert, design, animation, slide show. 
let him go ahead sir i he is on camera like this no problem so i should please fight. go ahead manohar go ahead these people slides are not moving in gone to the last slide are you okay manohar Like, yes, the you press there. Start, start. On the down, you have one screen type thing. On the right lower side of the screen, next to sixty-eight percent. Press there. If that doesn't work, every slide you have to click separately. Then we will not have a the, that slide, slide is having a challenge. Show, but we'll be able to see. Okay. Manohar, on the right lower side, can you see the three icons? He is not listening, Manohar. Are you able to hear us, Kana? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear. For me, it's showing us the slide. Color, Rajini, are you ready? Sir. Are you ready to share your screen? Sir, I am not able to yes, share now since the other person is sharing. Good, Kana. Uh, yes, he is ready. Good, Kana. Ready. Please go ahead, Ma. Yeah, uh, now it's fine. Yeah. Manohar, start. <laughs> Can't hear you, Manohar. Speak loudly. Keep the volume on. Uh, yes, but that's better. Speak loudly. Some more, some more, some more. I took a Manohar R. Adhikari, PG student from Department of General Surgery, BMC Surgery. Hello. Or if you switch off your Hello. video, your 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 screenshot, then you'll be able to. You've done this overlapping. That's why this the bandwidth is being used up. Just show the screen, not yourself. Manohar, are you comfortable doing it now? No, remove your headset, Manohar. I think that is the one which is giving challenge. Headset or Bluetooth, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Hello, Rajini. Are you ready? Okay. Yes, sir. Wait, let me ask, sir, so that you Manohar, can. I think we have to check your audio, ma. We are unable to hear. I would request you to unshare the screen, get your systems ready, because this will be very difficult for the examiners to follow. All right, we are unable to hear you at all. You can stop. Color, Rajini. If you are ready, they can. We can ask sir to unshare their. Board. We are unable to hear you at all, Manohar. You please yes, don't worry. You go second. You please unshare your screen. Ranjini, Hello. you can start sharing your screen and start your presentation. Let uh, Manohar settle down. No problem. Go yes, ahead. Sir, are you able to see me? You are good to go. Very yeah. able yes, to see me. All the best. Thank you, sir. Good evening to all the faculty members and my colleagues. Uh, my topic of presentation today is uh, mass abdomen. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Kalaranjini. I am doing a final year postgraduate uh, in Coimbatore Medical College Hospital. My HRE is uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Lakshmi Narayanan, Madam, and my guide is uh, Professor Dr. Shrinivasan, sir. Uh, to start with the background my patient is uh, mr x a 60 year old male who is a farmer by occupation who is a resident of uh, dharmaburi uh, uh, district in tamil nadu he presented with uh, complaints of uh, mass in the right side of abdomen he was apparently normal 6 months back when he noticed swelling in the right side of uh, right side of the abdomen which was insidious in onset gradually progressive there was no aggravating or relieving factors Other than this, the patient had no other complaints. 
He had no complaints of abdominal pain, no history of vomiting. There was no history of altered bowel habits, no history of abdominal distension. There was no history of yellow discoloration of skin, eyes, or urine. No history of fever. No history of uh, burning maturation or hematuria. No history of uh, trauma. No history of loss of weight or loss of appetite. No history of a uh, cough, breathlessness, or hemoptysis. No history of paresthesia in the legs or any swelling of the legs. Uh, can I go to past history, sir? Um, Yeah, you press it. You press it. Yes, sir. Uh, he had no history of any com comorbidities like diabetes mellitus, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, bronchial asthma, or uh, pulmonary tuberculosis. Uh, there was no history of uh, previous abdominal surgeries. There was no history of drug drug intake. There was no history of radiotherapy in the past or during his childhood. Personal history: He was a known case of smoker for 30 years. His smoking index was uh, 600, uh, approximately 20 cigarettes per day. He is not a known alcoholic. Uh, he had normal bowel and bladder habits. He had normal sleep and normal appetite. Samadhi, a 60-year-old male, was a farmer by occupation and known chronic smoker. Came with complaints of uh, swelling in the right side of abdomen for uh, six months. There was no uh, other complaints uh, such as vomiting or altered bowel habits, loss of weight or loss of appetite. Uh, can I proceed to examination, sir? No. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, color engineering. Uh, by your history, what do you think you are dealing with? Just an in uh, insidious swelling of the abdomen. Uh, what? Since it is a uh, uh, other than the swelling, he doesn't have any other complaints or any constitutional fevers. Probably it is a mass in the abdomen. Uh, could be benign etiology, most probably. It could be arising from the uh, liver. A right side kidney, a right side uh, adrenal, a uh, pancreas, or a retroperitoneal origin. Okay. Uh, do you think the gut is involved? Because you have not uh, asked about Malina. Is there any history of Malina? Uh, no history of Malina, sir. No abdominal complaints. Since uh, this this large swelling, uh, obviously the patient <clears throat> must have any compression symptoms or uh, uh, GI hemorrhage symptoms if it is arising from the uh, bowel. So most probably it's not arising from the bowel. So it's not arising from the bowel. It's not arising from the uh, genital urinary tract, and uh, based on the history, not arising, sir. Okay. Yeah, that thinking is correct. Actually, with the large swelling, you having no bowel or or genital urinary. So what will you? What else you consider then? There's no symptom bowel related, no genital urinary uh, symptom, and you consider it's a big swelling. Is my patient. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> what are the possible? Uh, <clears throat> uh, retroperitoneal or hepatic swelling, sir. Since it is in the predominantly in the right upper quadrant. Okay. okay. At this point, you can consider bowel is out, genital urinary may be out because no symptom. Okay. Consider retroperitoneal yes, is a good possible diagnosis. I agree. Whenever there is a swelling with no symptoms, retroperitoneal or in ladies, you consider ovary. Ad oh, adnexal, yes, sir. Adnexal mass is the. common thinking okay correct you can proceed yeah. general physical uh, examination so wait, wait. wait. Uh, oh, yeah. wait, wait. or no wait, wait. Uh, can i ask be next thing what you can say is a be next sir yes sir uh, that's no, sir yes i want for clarification yeah. uh, yes, you said like uh, when the other person was asking the vote likely to be retroperitoneal yes sir so what exactly is retroperitoneal space Sir, sorry, sir. What? What exactly has it got any boundaries like that, so that you can? Uh, you superiorly can from the uh, retroperitoneal space is bounded superiorly by the diaphragm and the uh, costophrenic uh, ligament, sir, and uh, inferiorly up to the pelvic bone. Um, it includes the. Uh, I'm, not, I'm more interested to know. Are there sir? any spaces in the retroperitoneum no, where you can uh, we can point out the point likely organs in each? Yeah, very much. Clear, but all that. Perirenal space. Uh, the anterior uh, uh, pararenal space. Uh, what what does this anterior? Uh, what does this uh, anterior renal pararenal space contain? Its organs. Um, fat and uh, uh, 
So there is a fat in the anterior parallel space. No, where is this fat essentially? Which which space is? Is it anterior parallel space, posterior parallel space, and the perineal space? Posteriorly, right? it will be uh, more serious. No, no, you are not getting my point, man. So. Uh -huh. There is an anterior parallel space, there is a posterior space, and yeah. a perineal space. Yes, yes, sir. So where exactly is this uh, space where there are no important structures like kidney, adrenal, and posterior, and sir. Posterior. Good. Yes, sir. What are the what are those organs? What are those structures? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, what are, the, what are the non-organic, no, no, there are no important organs. Sir, uh, ureter, fatty areolar tissue. Uh, no, no, ureter uh, is not in the posterior. Muscles, quadratus lumborum muscle, uh, psoas muscle. So there is a fat, there is a kind of tissue on nerves. Nerves, yes, sir. So the, since your complaint is not related to a particular organ like colon or pancreas or kidney or okay. ureter, Yes, sir. It is better to be better to I mean isolate, I mean better to locate your something from the fat and anti sure or nerves. Okay, sir. So your diagnosis should be most probably because there is no symptoms related to any particular organ. Okay. Right? So that's yes, why one way of guiding you to say likely to be either fat, anti sure or nerves. Yes, sir. So of these three, which is the most common retroperitoneal. Fat, liposarcoma, uh, fat, sir, from fat. Is fat liposarcoma is the common tumor in the retroperitoneum? So most of the tumors from retroperitoneal are uh, malignant, sir. Uh, benign is uh, seen uh, in less percentage. Among malignant liposarcoma is most common, sir. How, how common is it? Sir, uh, malignant tumors, or uh, eighty percent of retroperitoneal tumors are uh, malignant. No, almost no, half no, of them. No, no, you are sir, almost like. No, no, here, please. You said liposarcoma. My question is, how uh, common is it? Mostly like half of the tumors uh, come out to be uh, liposarcoma. One, one third, one third, one third. One third, sir. Before the vote, next question. You asked about radiotherapy in the past. Did you, and you know, why did you ask? Yes, sir. That? Sir, right. a history of radiation exposure uh, can uh, is one of the risk factors for uh, development of uh, sarcoma, sir. Uh, why, uh, why, why, any... why radiation is given to abdomen without any complaint? Uh, if in, during childhood any uh, treatment for lymphoma or uh, anything is revealed, it could be one of the risk factors for uh, sarcoma for that time, sir. It's lymphoma? It's a non-arch skin. So only non-arch and sarcoma in the red pattern? Uh, sometimes HL, lymphoma. HL, uh, HL, does, HL does not come? Sir? HL does not come? Uh, Rarely, sir, but most commonly in orange skin lymphoma. Okay, that's it. The others can take over. Okay, color injury. He, your patient, yes, for, his occupation is a farmer. Yes, sir. So, uh, does his occupation uh, can it be a, a risk factor for any of these tumors? So, uh, certain chemical exposures are uh, are uh, thought considered to be risk factors uh, for uh, uh, development of sarcoma, sir. It's not. Uh, uh, proven. So his exposure to insecticides and pesticides, yes, right? Yes, they sir. can be a risk factor, right? Yes, Why do you consider benign tumor color injury? You said it's a benign, most likely a benign tumor. Yes, sir. Large tumor mm -hmm. in a sixty-year-old man, you know. So the age and the size of the swelling, and uh, within six months, there is this much. It could be malignant, sir. But other than that, the patient doesn't have any uh, constitutional symptoms, uh, loss of weight or loss of appetite. For any compression symptoms, Fitness. most probably. Constitutional symptoms, loss of weight, and all these retroperitoneal fillings. Yes. Is it necessary to get all these symptoms to say it's malignant? Uh, it could be malignant also, sir. Yes, definitely. You need to consider uh, such a yes. large swelling developed in a 60 year old man. You need to consider. From his age, it could be malignancy also, sir. But more likely, benign or malignant? Which one do you consider more? Such. Uh, based on history, uh, you can consider from yeah. age and uh, size, you can consider malignancy, sir. Yeah, 
Kalaran, Kalaran, just one or two questions. You have, yes, can you think of any benign lesions which can attain a large size? That's the only question. We all know elderly people, rapid growing, six months, large size. We definitely consider malignancy. I have seen your yes, picture, such a large one. Any benign possibility? Yes. Sir, uh, uh, pseudocyst of pancreas, but no, usually it's in the left side. Or uh, hepatic cyst can be uh, larger, sir. Uh, renal cyst. Say what hepatic cyst? Suddenly you brought hepatic cyst. What is that can grow such a large uh, place? Is it uh, hepatic cyst? Sir. Is it known to go into that size, hydrated cyst or a polycystic mm -hmm. or whatever? Not, even even simple cyst because... may not grow like that. Yes, retroperitoneal sir. cyst itself is there. There's an entity called a retroperitoneal cyst. No doubt, yes, in the younger age group, lymphatic cyst. There, most of them are lymphangioma, cystic teratomas. Uh, they could come, sir. And Benign another, teratomas. Yes, sir. Yeah, somebody has asked a pseudo cyst can it on the right side like that? It may in the no, chat. Usually, it's the left side, yes, sir. Can you think of anything from the adrenals? Can it in a large size sometimes? Benign tumors. Yes, Non-functioning, some of the. Tumors. Lymphoma, sir. Uh, we, we will we will talk about it later, probably as a differential diagnosis. I think please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, general physical examination. The patient was examined after uh, obtaining consent. Uh, he was conscious, oriented to time, place, and person. He was uh, moderately built and nourished. His weight was 74 kg. Height was 168 centimeter. His BMI was uh, 26.2. His ECOJ performance status is zero. His pulse rate was 84 beats per minute, uh, measured in the right uh, uh, radial pulse. Blood pressure 130 80 mmHg, measured in the right arm in supine position. Respiratory rate was uh, 22 per minute. He was afebrile. His hydration status was adequate. There was no pallor, ictus, clubbing, cyanosis, generalized nephronopathy, or uh, pedal edema. An examination of abdomen on inspection. Uh, vague mass was seen uh, in the right hypochondrium, epigastric and right lumbar region, for approximately 15 plus 8, 10 centimeter. Skin over the swelling was uh, normal. The swelling uh, does not move with respiration. On doing leg raising test, the swelling becomes uh, less prominent. Uh, umbilicus is in the midline and inverted. All quadrants uh, move equally with the uh, respiration. On uh, examining the patient in the left lateral position, the swelling does not shift to the opposite side. There was no dilated veins, scars, and sinuses. No visible pulsations or peristalsis. In the right, renal angle of the right side, no fullness was seen. The hernia orifices was normal. External genitalia was normal. This is a picture of the swelling. Um, in palpation, the inspectory findings were confirmed. There was no local rising temperature in any regions of the abdomen. Uh, mass of size 15 plus 10 centimeters palpable in the right hypochondrium, epigastric, and right lumbar region. The upper border was not palpable. Uh, the, the mass had ill defined margins. It was smooth surfaced, it was not mobile, firm in consistency, not pulsatile. The swelling does not uh, move with respiration. Uh, it uh, was not able to insinuate uh, fingers between the swelling and the right costal margin. Inferiorly, the swelling uh, uh, was uh, found to be extending uh, 7 cm above the line joining the pubic symphysis and uh, ASIS, medially 2 cm to the left of midline, laterally 1 cm beyond the mid axillary line. There was no guarding or rigidity. With examination in the left lateral position, the swelling does not seem to shift to opposite side. On a renal angle on the right side, no tenderness was seen. Corneal orifices uh, are normal. On an examination of uh, external genitalia, a scrotum was found to be Sir, uh, scrotum was found to be normal. Bilateral testes are uh, normal in size. Uh, bilateral supraclavicular region, uh, no palpable lymph node was seen. In percussion, no free fluid was noted in the abdomen. There was a dull note on percussion over the mass, which was continuous over the liver dullness. Rest of the abdomen was resonant of percussion. No auscultation, normal bowel sounds were heard. No jewelry was heard over the mass. Uh, Perrectal examination, normal sphincter tone was seen, no palpable mass or induration was seen, there was no palpable deposits, fecal staining was seen. Systemic examination, uh, CVS S4 S2 was heard normally, no murmurs were heard. In RS, normal vesicular breath sounds were heard, no added sounds, no focal neurological deficits were seen. On uh, assessment of bilateral lower limbs for neurological and vascular system, it was found to be normal. Uh, examination of spine was normal. In summary, 
a 60 year old male who is a farmer by occupation who is a known chronic smoker came with complaints of uh, swelling in the right side of abdomen for the past 6 months he had no complaints such as vomiting or altered bowel habits loss of weight or loss of appetite on examination a mass of size 15 cross 10 cm was palpable in the right hypochondrium epigastric and right lumbar region with the upper border not palpable uh, ill defined borders smooth surface not mobile does not move with respiration firm in consistency not pulsatile and it was palpable uh, from the right costal margin or just above the pelvic rim so probable diagnosis is swelling in the right hypochondrium and right lumbar region uh, probably a retroperitoneal mass probably a malignant etiology uh, points which i tell in favor of retroperitoneal mass is that um, it is less prominent uh, with the grazing test and did not move with respiration on doing the uh, on examining in the left lateral position the swelling did not shift to the opposite side and the swelling, uh, there was no signs of inflammation the patient did not have any pain uh, some ruling out uh, inflammatory causes and uh, the fact the, the points which are against uh, features of malignancy are uh, i think i the point towards malignancy is that the sudden increase in size of mass and uh, against malignancy is that the patient does not have any loss of weight or loss of appetite and the swelling is not hard in consistency dr kalaranjani why do you stick to swelling and not lump Uh, do you call do you call this a swelling in abdomen? No, sir, mass or lump, lump, sir, yes, sir. So that would be a better terminology. Yes, sir. Now, Chaturji, I want to ask one or two questions. You you said the all quadrants move equally with yes. the respiration. Do you think that is correct? All quadrants of the abdomen will move mm -hmm. equally with the respiration. Normal patients, normal people. Sir. Uh, because of the mass, that could be restricted no, no, or movement. No, no, no. no. See, now, now you are getting stuck into the mud. No, not the mass. Normal, normally, do you think a person will breathe, all quadrants will move equally with respiration? That's not a correct terminology. You can say correspondingly with your respiration. Yes. Okay, sir. Not, not correct. And also, okay. is the mass crossing the midline? We didn't, I didn't hear anything saying that his mass is only in there. Yes, in the midline. yes, sir. It crosses the midline one centimeter beyond the midline to the left side, sir. Okay. Confirmed even with palpation and with percussion, so the dullness uh, uh, was uh, beyond the midline. So what does it indicate? Uh, usually retroperitoneal lesions doesn't cross the midline, but... Uh, uh, doesn't cross the midline? Does not cross the midline, sir. But uh, I'm not able to justify in this point. The lesion was seen one centimeter beyond the midline. Retroperitoneum can cross, it can, can uh, extend the mass. The third point I want to ask you is it bimanually palpable? You, I, I, I didn't miss it. Maybe I missed it. Did you say anything? No, no sir. It's not, uh, I didn't mention in palpation, sir. Uh, it was on. Do you think it's yes, important sir. to mention a mass in the lumbar region occupying each city? Yes, sir, for uh, kidney lesions, you have to mention about uh, bimanual palpation. No, no, sir. kidney pal bimanual palpation is not for kidney alone. Any mass in the uh, lumbar region may be bimanual palpation. I'm not talking about palatability. Yes, bimanual. Yes, sir. It may, you, you didn't look for it, maybe, did you? Uh, I'll check for renal angle and uh, palatability only, sir. I didn't know. Palatability, what do you mean by palatability? Or, uh, any lesions arising from the uh, kidney uh, with one uh, with one uh, 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 the the palm is placed placed in the flank directed upwards yeah. and uh, it is uh, pushed upwards. With smaller lesions uh, due to some space uh, in, uh, above the kidney, you could feel yeah, it on the tapping the other hand. That is the point. You need some space. You need yeah. medical. Both these are important. Come and strike yeah. the hand and fall. Particularly seen renal disease. palpability, you will get with most of the mass occupying the lumbar region. Even if some large colonic mass, you may get with operatorial mass. Okay. I think that's the point I indicated. Others can take up. Yes, sir. Uh, did you see for the renal angle, say? Yes, sir. No, uh, I couldn't feel any uh, palpable mass or any tenderness was not there in the renal angle, sir. What are the things you look in the renal angles? Uh, any fullness, uh, yes. uh, tenderness. Yes. Uh, that's all, sir. Anything else? Anything on percussion? Dullness. Uh, 
band of uh, resonance will be you know, it will be dull sir if any swelling is there is the renal angle resonant or dull normally uh in the with the, due to the presence of a uh, bowel uh, band of resonance will be seen uh, anteriorly no, no, band of resonance will be seen yes sir no you just simply tell normally, whether the renal angle is normally dull or it is resonant normally resonant sir normally resonant and that is why yes, you get the band of resonance in the renal lumps because that is shifted in front and that is why you get the band of resonance sometimes in the renal lumps yes, did you check for the fluid thrill in this lump 10 10 10 no, uh, no evidence of free fluid was there sir no fluid thrill not, not the free okay. fluid i am asking about fluid thrill in this lump no fluid thrill was seen sir if you get a fluid thrill in such type of the lump what will be the diagnosis sir uh, associated ascites is seen uh, it could be because not of portal and compression i'm not talking about the ascites i am talking about this lump which is there within the lump fluid you find, thrill, you sir. find a fluid uh, thrill in this type okay. of the lump what will be your first diagnosis Okay, that will be hydronephrosis. Okay, okay hydronephrosis. Okay, hydronephrosis. Okay, it is not always necessary that the renal angle will full. If the anterior hydronephrosis is there, then in yes, that sir. case you may find the renal angle is normal, but still you are getting a big lump in that. Second will be the hydrated cyst. Yes, okay, so these are the differential yes, diagnoses. You find a fluid thrill in such a big lump which is there. Yes, sir. Proprioritorial swelling. Would you like to examine the lower limb a little more carefully? Did you examine the lower limb, right yes, lower limb? Would you like yes, to sir. hold uh, that? We will check for uh, the sensations. If any dilated veins are seen, uh, any swelling is seen, uh, it indicates a uh, neurovascular bundle compression by the lump. Yeah. Is there any weakness or anything? Any neurological deficit? No, the patient didn't have any deficit. Sir, his uh, sensations were intact, and uh, he had no dilated veins. Okay. Because you are considering retroperitoneal already, sir, as well. Uh, ask you what are the retroperitoneal structures? Fat, nerves, muscles. Yes, these are the things which can arise from any one of these structures. So, if they arise from the nerve, we should definitely look for a neurovascular defect. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, can I ask, please? Can I? Can I talk? Yes. Sir. Okay. Now, uh, color and age. Since this is on yes, the sir. right side of abdomen. Yes, sir. Which which vascular symptoms you are likely to experience in this patient? What have you done for that, sir? Uh, since on the right side, uh, with compression of uh, the IVC and the uh, right iliac vessels, the patient may develop uh, 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 bilateral lower limb swelling, and uh, right side uh, dilated veins can. What, what do you mean? What do you mean by dilated lower limb swelling? What do you mean by that? Varicose veins. No, sir. Because of the IVC compression, uh, the patient may develop a uh, swelling of both the legs, sir, due to edema. Venous flow. Yes, sir. Edema. Edema. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How do you differentiate venous edema from lymphatic edema? Sir, uh, venous edema, uh, pitting edema will be seen, sir. Lymphatic edema is not pitting. Um, The fatty edema also is pitting in initial stages. Later on, becomes non-pitting. Okay. Other than that, other than that, any other main difference between venous edema and lymphatic edema? Mm -hmm. Sir, mm -hmm. I've heard of, I've heard of lymphatia. <laughs> well, skin changes. Properly. What skin changes? Pain, pain. Painful, painful edema. Painful, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, IVC compression may also cause low blood pressure. Yes, sir. So which you are not talked about in general examination. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. That's very important. Now, since this tumor is, uh, is slow growing and painless, what are the yes, likely sir. conditions which can now, uh, I mean, narrow down? Yes, sir. Mostly from the fat or from the muscle tissues, it could be arising, sir. No, okay. from the no. nerves. Be specific about the diagnosis. Now that we have come to the diagnostic stage, most probably a retroperitoneal tumor. Uh, probably malignant etiology. Uh, first uh, differential diagnosis would be liposarcoma, sir. Okay, wonderful. Other than that, 
could be leo mayo sarcoma agar gaya hai for um this is very large swelling i could not uh, consider lymphoma or uh, hepatic lesion sir uh, benign swelling avoid benign swelling avoid squamous squamous yes sir huh? arising from the no arising from the are there non neoplastic retro peritoneal masses you heard of yes sir uh, cystic and solid lesions uh, leo myoma uh, lipoma no no we can we can madam well, non neoplastic non neoplastic here my question uh-huh. don't be in hurry to answer the order that comes to your mind retro peritoneal uh, uh, cysts uh, uh, mesenteric cysts hello rajini uh-huh. And yes, other sir. organs also in the retroperitoneum, right? Yes, sir. Which yes, can sir. give rise to masses. Yes, sir. So, which are the organs in the retroperitoneum which can give rise to uh-huh. masses? Renal cyst. Renal cyst, sir. Uh, Hydroeritronephrosis. Uh, I have heard of Armand's disease, O R M O N D. Retroperitoneal fibrosis, sir. Uh, idiopathic retroperitoneal fibrosis. Yes, even hematoma, granuloma, uh-huh. biloma. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Can there be tumors of the of the of the gut, which is in the retroperitoneum? Sir, uh, tumors are rising from the descending colon, and uh, duodenum can right. present the retroperitoneal mass. So there are there are, there are many organs which which are retroperitoneal. right yes sir and they can give rise to swellings which can be neoplastic or non neoplastic right okay sir a pseudo cyst is also a retroperitoneal structure right you can have a duplication cysts and all this from the bowel you can have a duodenal duplication but do you consider lymphoma this patient do you have to when you consider lymphoma it has to be lymph nodal or mass isn't it for that the, the it should be an anatomical location for lymph nodes do you think this is a yes. normal area for lymph nodes no sir no sir no so we can consider anatomically lymphoma also you said mesenteric cyst is this is a location where you get mesenteric cyst no sir uh, though these no, are sir. not like, uh, you should not say all this okay mesenteric okay, cyst lymphoma also is not part of the differential type because of the location because, okay and also okay, retroperitoneal cyst is acceptable many cysts can be there if you are uh, muller in cyst we recently we had a large cyst it turned out to be a muller in origin ियलोमा To six twenty percent, you get retroperitoneal. That's very common location. Okay, yeah. So retroperitoneal lipoma. Okay. Uh, just for one more question, you are talking yes, about sir. external genitalia in this patient. In this patient, okay, generally always yes, examining the genitalia in a man. Yes, Is there a significance of examining the genitalia in these patients in view of your abdominal lines? Sir, uh, this large swelling uh, it couldn't be sir, but uh, one of the DD for retroperitoneal mass is uh, metastatic lymph nodes, which could be coming from testicular tumors. But uh, in this particular patient, since it is very large, it is less probable that it is a lymph node. Okay. Now, what is his age? Sixty, sir. So, do you, do you likely to do you come across that there was testicular tumor sixty year old man? No, mm, sir. That's why I'm asking. In this particular case, sir, is there any importance? You can't. I don't think you can. To, you can um, not say no. Sir, yeah, the clinical tumor can come at the age of fifty. If it is fifty, it, it is. It is not common, but it can happen. Yes. So Even right. lymphomas. Lymphomas are seen in elderly. Yeah. Yes, sir. Just clinical lymphomas. Right. Kalal yes, Jini, I have one question to you. You have told yes, some that skin over the swelling. Yeah. See, in yes, abdominal sir. mass, I think you don't use that word. Okay, in a, this is a chronic abdomen. Don't expect uh, you written on uh, skin over the uh, somewhere on inspection. 
is not required. Yes, okay. We expect okay, to mention more of dilated veins, inferior vena cava obstruction, such a large mass on the right side. So if yes, there's sir. an IVC is obstructed, a kind of a lateral veins, pedal edema, a secondary varicosity in the thigh, these are all more relevant rather than mentioning the skin over the skull. Okay. Okay, sir. Right. Yes, sir. And yes, uh, being on the right side, uh, you should have done uh, bimanual palpation and uh, palatability. You have to mention, I think there is no, it will be a mistake mm -hmm. if you don't mention that, especially on okay. the right side. And uh, undifferentiated cells can occur anywhere. So anything is possible in the retroperitoneum. It is the, especially this type of uh, cases, such a large uh, tumor, whatever. So yes, uh, that is what uh, is important here. Okay, yeah, right. Okay, sir. Uh, Kala, yeah, just, uh, if there is a IVC obstruction, how the yes, blood sir. will go? How the blood will go to the heart? Sir, uh, due to collaterals, the, the flow will be diverted to uh, SVC, what sir. Colla what the... collateral? Sir, uh, what collateral? Mm, in the abdomen, uh, inferior epicastric will... Uh, from the IVC will go and uh, communicate with the branch tributaries of superior uh, vena cava, sir. Oh. That is in a portal hypertension. Portal hypertension, ma. What is so, the uh, vein? Central, central vein is portal hypertension. Lateral vein is What are those okay. lateral veins? No? What is the vein? vein? Sir, uh, um, it develops from the branches of the intercostal vessels. Uh, they joint from how the many, how, many how, many intercostal, how many intercostal veins you have? What um, is well, subcostal vein? 12th, 12th intercostal vein, sir. Okay, so 11th intercostal, 12th subcostal vein. So the main, main function of Asiga's vein is communicating between IVC and SVC. So whenever you get to the common blood, because there is a large volume of blood, that will not be seen by the lateral vein which is there. So mainly it is goes to the Asiga's vein system. How do you know whether the obstruction is at IVC or iliac vein? Sir, um, with the IVC, the patient will develop bilateral leg edema, sir. With iliac vein obstruction, the patient will develop a scrotal swelling and a, um, unilateral. unilateral leg edema. So you have put here as no features of malignancy, but you said uh, it is probably a malignancy. Uh, uh, typing mistake, sir. I wanted to tell the points in favor of malignancy and against malignancy. Uh, so what is, what is the point in favor of malignancy? Do you think the a sarcoma, sudden increase in say? size and, uh, and the do, large do swelling? Do you expect a sudden increase in size in sarcoma? Sir, uh, but... Um, what does that sudden mean? Uh, next next within day. Six months, within six months, the patient developed such a large swelling uh, before that he didn't have any complaints and his age are uh, pointing towards malignancy, sir. So what are the malignant features of the sarcoma? You get the clinical symptoms. It is not the routine um, like this, you are uh, hard inconsistency, loss of weight, loss of pain, you don't get normally. Okay, sir. Usually, sarcoma is present with a, a, a slow-growing tumor uh, for a long time. Retroperitoneal region for a long time, the patient may not be aware of the uh, complaint. With, uh, can it, can it produce becoming... the fever? Can it produce fever? Sir, um, can it produce uh, with, hypoglycemia? Uh, sir, yes, sir. Uh, due to insulin growth, uh, growth factor like substance release as a paraneoplastic syndrome, patient may develop a hypoglycemia. So, so, how will you differentiate this hypoglycemia? Is due to normal diabetes developing hypoglycemia or due to the paraneoplastic hypoglycemia? The response with uh, glucose, sir. Very good. So, in response with the glucose, will not be there with the paraneoplastic. So, don't yes, don't try to put this no features of malignancy like that because there are so okay, many sir. other features. You cannot put mention them. Hmm? Okay, sir. Hmm. One more point I want to add here, as I mentioned uh, before, that is about the examination of scrotum, okay? The test yes, swelling, not only chest swelling, suppose the right chest is absent, a large yes, polar mass will lower up. If this is a little higher up swelling, yeah, suppose the swelling is in the lumbar and lower down, and yes, the right sir. chest is absent in this patient. The old yes, patient, I agree, a little older for that. What, what will be your diagnosis? Suppose the right chest is absent. Uh, uh, 
and the patient uh, might have had cryptorchidism and uh, in later ages be in testicular atrophy testicular tumor can arise yes so probably it is a testicular tumor right okay that all that's why the importance of examining the scrotum very carefully in you know, our patients as uh, mm -hmm. abdominal mass especially lower abdominal this is a higher as you mentioned it is a little higher up mass maybe not an anatomical location lower abdominal mass is very important to see the testis any mass there presence of testis itself is a very important point okay ट्रीटमेंट and then uh, i would like to do imaging no, 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 study no. first you have to come to a diagnosis diagnosis imaging you have to come to a diagnosis study. whether first of all it's from retroperitoneal or elsewhere yes, and sir. then from retroperitoneal uh, whether it's from an organ or from without an organ is primary or secondary right and okay. then you proceed yeah please i'll uh, start with the uh, ultrasound sir uh, we have to uh, find the organ of uh, origin and uh, we could find if it is a solid or cystic in nature then uh, further uh, I'll, i'll i would like to do cct abdomen and pelvis sir um the, the size and extent of the swelling any presence of uh, lymph node any involvement of the adjacent organs and uh, involvement of the vessels will be uh, seen so i can plan for uh, the procedure sir normally what do you mean by organ of origin organ of origin to exclude the Uh, if it is not arising from any of the organs, uh, I would like to say it is a retroperitoneal uh, uh, tumor, sir. It could be a renal origin or uh, uh, liver from liver uh, or from adrenal uh, gland. So I would like to exclude uh, origin from any of these organs. So then it will be probably retroperitoneal uh, from the uh, posterior space. Uh, color, Ranjini. What is phantom okay. organ sign? Have you so, heard of it? A phantom yes, organ sign. I'll tell you. I don't know it. I'll tell. So, or, or so many times, so many times he cannot find out because the the tumor is so large and it's arising from a small tumor organ. The tumor yes, covers the whole organ, so it doesn't. You can't find out the organ of origin. You just see yes, the tumor. So this is known as a phantom organ sign, right? Okay, sir. Whether yes, tumor sir. is arising from us from a organ, but he cannot find it out because. Of the large size of the tumor, which is covering the whole organ, so you cannot just by saying that is uh, that is a retroperitoneal thing not arising from a from any structure just by CT scan. Mm -hmm. Any blood test would you like to do specifically? Sir, uh, for a retroperitoneal sarcoma, sir. I don't know whether it's a retroperitoneal sarcoma, not yet. Yes, I'm not sure, but would you like to do some blood test to rule out? some possibilities sir uh, for um, renal swellings i would like to do alp and uh, um, ldh sir for uh, adrenal gland i would like to do metanephrins to rule out um, um, can you have germ cell tumors here uh, yes sir uh, afp or uh, beta hcg uh, as a fetal protein to rule out uh, germ cell tumors sir So It's one of the yes, plus to rule out pancreas. See the mammalian sir. Three ninety nine. So you get these basic blood tests done just yes, to make sure because yes. look, retroperitoneal uh, tumors are very difficult to to diagnose and to manage both, right? Clinically, you find yes. that the tumor has pushed everything of the uh, peritoneal uh, cavity anteriorly, and is involving all the surrounding structures. The The vessels, the nerves, right? It's a confined yes, space, sir. and there are so many things which can which can occur. So it's very difficult to come to a to a particular diagnosis just by uh, by investigations or or by uh, clinical examination. So we have to yes, do sir. all kinds of investigations to rule out various other tumors till we can come to a diagnosis. Normally, yes, the radiology investigation you do for peripheral uh, suspected soft tissue of sarcoma. What is the investigation choice? Peripheral soft tissue sarcoma. What is the invest radiological investigation choice? So CCT. 
really peripheral soft i mean now i'm not talking about retroperitoneal peripheral limb limb so uh, biopsy sir no no radiology i asked radiological value no oh, imaging imaging sir no imaging sir ஒரு <laughs> fluid the tissue interface is better with ct okay number okay. two the motion patient has to be inside this string uh, the this mri console for a long time the motion and uh, patient moves and its motion derangements uh, or artifacts would be more with mri the third point yes. is what you mentioned you can easily assess the secondary the deposits secondary met- metastatics uh, so the ct chest abdomen and pelvis we combine it to you can easily assess the Uh, second period. when if you do the mri for the peripheral uh, soft tissue cct of the chest is the investigation choice to rule out the secondary so cct is the must okay. to for, find out yes, the metastasis so in this case you can combine and do cct so cct okay, you, okay, you, okay, just spiral ct spiral ct is a investigation radiology even investigation choice for suspected retroperitoneal sarcoma for these reasons okay. okay so not mri right you rightly mentioned that okay you are doing ct only for a diagnosis or anything else also you have in mind only the from the origin from where it comes can you make out the grading by the ct sir uh, yes sir based on size only we are going to do a tnm sir but the grading is also no, no. Uh, Gra- grading is important whether the ct can help you in make a grading in any tumor no sir you need a histopathological uh, 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 examination for grading. He can tell you, especially see liposarcoma is the common. Fifty percent you get a liposarcoma. Yes, sir. Even yes, sir. Uh, more in the liposarcoma. Liposarcoma can be easily differentiated with the high grade or low grade by the CT, depending upon the fatty tissue which is there. If the yes, non-fatty sir. tissue is more than seventy five percent, then they they grade that. Okay. That is one of the the way CT you can definitely uh, try to have the I mean not exactly what the grade G one, G two, G three. but you can think of whether it is a high grade tumor or a low grade tumor by the ct and one is the necrosis so one of the parts of necrosis reconstitution yeah all these will tell you whether it's high grade or low grade wound necrosis tumor necrosis can be picked up by cct so three parameters you consider for grading are the it might also mitotic count uh, yes sir necrosis and uh, differentiation isn't it differentiation yes, so necrosis part you can pick up the other two you cannot Pick up by it. Necrosis, you can pick up by it. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, what is the commonest way of organ or metastasis in the in the retroperitoneal sarcoma? For so lungs and liver, sir. Oh no, no, no. no what liver. is the order in which it goes? Retroperitoneal sarcoma. Or most common. Lungs. No, or not lungs. Lungs no. for the peripheral sarcoma, ma. If there is peripheral sarcoma, the peripheral definitely lungs. This is the retroperitoneal sarcoma. What is the most common organ? It is the liver, liver, and then lungs. Okay, so retroperitoneal and abdominal sarcoma first go to the liver. And the liver. Then, that's why again, CT you should have the must be very important. You should also remember there is a major difference in the staging also with the nodal involvement. If yes. there is a nodal involvement in a retroperitoneal sarcoma, it is only three B. And if there is a yes, node, N one positive in a peripheral sarcoma, it is automatically goes to stage four. Metastasis. Stage four, yes, sir. So there is a two difference in the staging also from the retroperitoneal sarcoma, and the way it spreads, where it spreads also, it differs. Can you get yes, lymph node metastasis in soft tissue sarcoma? Sir, uh, no, sir. There are exceptions are there, but mostly it doesn't go to lymph nodes, sir. What other what other type type of malignant? I can't say like that. There are what other lymph nodes <laughs> go still go. Can't say no. Okay. Don't say no, the bad no. Absolutely. <laughs> there is no in message. It can can go. Some some tumors like tumor sarcoma, angiosarcoma, epithelial sarcoma, epithelial sarcoma. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
color engineering any role for yes, fnac true uh, core biopsy no, sir fnac there is no role in our retroperitoneal tumor sir why um, no are there uh, any indications for pre op biopsy biopsy if it is a uh, the if you are suspecting uh, germ cell tumors or uh, other tumors other than liposarcoma or uh, if it is pro if you are suspecting it to be probably benign or in cases of unresectable uh, tumors where we are going to plan for uh, chemotherapy chemo or radiotherapy initially in these cases we can uh, take a ct guided biopsy or image guided biopsy Correct. if it is going yes. to be resectable and based on a imaging unresectable uh, tumor patient be considered for neoadjuvant and patient with distant metastasis it yes. is again a common common statement but sometimes when you are in a total confusion where what is whether it is a sarcoma lymphoma this or when lymphoma you are justified in doing that so when we are not planning for a definite surgery you can bring up that what will be the finding histological finding suppose it is liposarcoma sir uh, uh, fat tissue uh, with a uh, uh, whirl of sign appearance will be seen sir what else will be there uh, The question means like for sarcoma has only the fat. Um, it will have um, myeloproliferative tissues. It will have osteoblasts. Yes, can be there. Yes, sir. What are the pathological types of like for sarcoma? Any idea? There are five varieties. Uh, well, well differentiated, uh, de-differentiated, pleomorphic, uh, and uh, uh, mixoid. 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 Which is the one? Which is the most malignant? Most malignant, which is the one? Pleomorphic. Yeah, pleomorphic. Round. round cell and mixed cell is the most common type. Well, round. round cell and mixed cell type is the most common type. So round cell and mixed cell type. What do you mean by de differentiation? De differentiation is the most malignant. Yeah. What do you What do you mean by de de differentiation? Sir, uh, there will be total absence of uh, normal differentiated cells. Sir. No, no, not like that. The lipo. What I read some time back is that the liposarcomatous tissue will change to some other malignant variety, variety of soft tissue sarcoma. With the transition, suddenly it will change to another type of malignancy within the same tumor area. Okay, so the same tumor or some area will be having classical liposarcoma at other area, and it will transit. to transit to another type of differentiate into another type of soft tissue sarcoma okay that is the differentiation so retroperitoneal okay. sarcoma what they say you can see multiple areas of the de differentiation because a large tumor so only one yes, area sir. multiple areas of de differentiation sometimes we find so that is a very malignant transformation as sir has mentioned the malignant yes, very malignant transformation okay so these are the five yes, types so then round cell is the most common Yes, sir. Your morphic or the mixoid is more. We can have a secondary in the spine. So when yes. you have that particular type, you must go for the spinal uh, evaluation. Yes, sir. What is the? Is there any role for PET scan? Will you do a PET scan in this case, sir? Suspect. If you are going to suspect bone damage, we can do, sir. Otherwise, uh, not. Normally, for liposarcoma, we don't uh, go with. Uh, so another. Way, what is the indication for PET scan in a suspected retroperitoneal sarcoma? There are limited indications. It's not a setting. It's not a widely accepted uh, investigation module. Limited. So suspecting this uh, in one go, we can uh, investigate. So we can go for a PET CT in case of metastatic diseases. So accepted indicator. One is the assessment of the tumor after new adjuvant chemotherapy. Okay, how much it has responded? Okay, sir. Number one. Yes. Number two. To detect a metastasis, occult metastasis in a high-grade soft tissue sarcoma. Okay. Yes, so these are the two accepted uh, indications for PET scan. Otherwise, it is not yes, a routine sir. investigation. If you have this, uh, these two indications, you can go ahead and do PET scan. Okay. Okay, sir. Hello, Ranjini. Uh, yes, can sir. I ask? Please, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, in case you order a CT angiogram, in this case, do you expect to yes, see anything? CT angiogram. So in cases of a retroperitoneal sarcoma, there will be multiple small vessels seen along the periphery entering the gland. The flush of uh, vessels can be seen. Sir. Okay, I have heard of floating aorta sign. 
um in uh, lymphoma and uh, the the iota will be pushed anteriorly by the mass even, even okay. ivc also ivc so yeah, it is a called as iota yeah, because most of the most of lymphoma cell parasitic means parasitic okay color uh, ranjit before you want to go for surgery what investigation yes, would sir? you like to have in your hand suppose you want to go in for surgery now what investigation yes, would you like to do before surgery Any particular investigations you would, you would like to have in hand before you going go in? You got a CT scan. Yes, sir. Any any, any other investigations would you like before going in for surgery? Imaging wise or blood investigations? You are asking, sir. Imaging wise, I mean, what? How would? Yes, sir. Imaging wise. um for involvement of uh, renal compression we can do intravenous urethrogram sir any infiltration is there or... okay so now we you anything else okay. so an iv and an angio would be helpful as a angio guide yes, Yes, sir. Hmm. Maybe a renal scan. Maybe you are uh, very close to the kidney. You are planning to remove the infiltration. Okay. You want to assess the yes, opposite kidney. You no. Know? Suppose you are doing yes, the removal of one kidney. Yes, sir. Kidney. So yes, sir. you probably would like to assess the function of the opposite kidney, a renal scan. That is why you yes, need sir. an IVO. IVO. Need an IVO. At least an IVO to function the function of the opposite kidney. That's why very most important. Yes, Because you yes, may have sir. to remove certain organs during surgery. Yes, sir. Doctor Kalvendini, just a sec. Uh, Doctor Navin here. So, in case you've already done a CCT of the abdomen, do you need an IVU again? So, to assess the renal pelvis and uh, ureter, uh, we need a IVU, sir, and that's that is going to tell an idea about the function. If there is any infiltration that is going to be. Uh, So I'll repeat my question. Do does the information that comes out of an IVU uh, can it be obtained from the contrast and CT scan of the abdomen also? No, sir. Okay, what's the difference between a CT urography and a, and a CT abdo a CCT abdomen? Why do you need a CT urography? How is it different from okay. a CT CCT abdomen? The contrast abdomen? is going to be given through intravenous route, sir. For a uh, IVU, we are going to do ascending urethrogram. Three or four. No, 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 no
know to bypass mm-hmm. the bowel after the for primary surgery the bowel may get stuck to the tumor bed and the post operative radiation can in- injure the bowel that's one thing mm-hmm. relatively if you give bowel will be pushed away as you mentioned so bowel may be protected another reason is post operatively if you it's give going to form a, it's going to form a pseudo capsule like so uh, your, your small chance of getting negative margins uh, with the radiotherapy given pre operatively you know that if you post operatively if you give radiation there will be a lot of fibrosis right. suppose there is a recurrence you need to do another surgery it will be very difficult that's the thing okay so because of this okay. pre operative radiation reduction of the tumor chemo also they prefer pre pre operative new adjuvant rather than adjuvant chemo is not very sensitive <laughs> treatment so preoperative yeah. therapy reduce the size this is it which is the definitive treatment what is the most definite treatment for retrograde surgery surgery sir surgery actually the only mainly main treatment for the it's dead suppose okay. the, suppose this tumor is very close to the uh, bowel something will you go ahead and resect the bowel uh, because to get a good clearance yeah. what is the no, what, sir. what is the new concept about that sir if its involvement is there infiltration is there uh, a resection will be done sir otherwise uh, there is no need to remove the adjacent structure sir very good the idea is that you need to get a good clearance but for the sake of clearance if you don't remove an uninvolved structure which is very close to the tumor because that may may improve a little bit of quality of life but no there is no involve, in, improvement in the, the survival survival rate yes no survival advantage so if it is involved yes you need to do a multi organ resection to get a clearance but if it's very near not in all you better know to remove the organs which are not what is the chance of come of come the most advantage is uh, it is very rarely infiltrative type yes it's not infiltrative always the pushing type it's pushing type. so it will be compressing and the pushing so if you are most of the time we fortunate you will not have much infiltration so the section is not always there. that is when we are justified doing our own resection carcinoma and sarcoma isn't it carcinoma is always infiltrating <laughs> sarcoma is a pushing type so that's why the kawaguchi is in the peripheral sarcoma the concept which we not discuss here the heart lung and border soft border and all those things what was done for this case ma and what was the histopathological report sir uh, cases yet to be operated sir we are working uh, due to covid the patient uh, the patient became covid positive we are not able to operate sir mm-hmm. so yet to yet to uh, evaluate sir mm-hmm. Color engineering. Yes, sir. What do you do for a case of a symptomatic, undetectable tumor? Sir, uh, give a preoperative uh, uh, radiotherapy, sir, and uh, followed by uh, surgery. Is there is there any place for palliative debulking? Sir, uh, with the uh, stage four. Uh, uh, if the patient no, is going to be answer is it a is there role for yes, palliative yes sir for symptom relief uh, there is a, a palliative uh, resection is done debulking is done sir there is, there is no increase in r round resection accepted sometimes what is the approach to if a right side to r round resection is accepted sometimes what is in the like sir come sometimes what is the name, name of the maneuver if you approach the right side operation or the, what is the name uh, of the right side uh, uh matox and uh, uh right side what is the right catals catals maneuver in right side and left side matox m a t t o x o x catal brush it's not catal catal brush maneuver catal brush yes what are the absolute contraindications for surgery Sir, uh, metastatic disease, sir, because there is no going to be multiple, be. multiple distant metastases. If it's metastasis. a solid tumor, we can still do it. Then, sir, uh, tumor invading involvement of the aorta and uh, tumor involving major structural structures, yes, gross sir. retinal invasion. Patient yes, unfit for surgery. Yes, sir. What is the treatment of recurrence? Suppose it uh, you remove it, the patient uh, comes back with the recurrence. Sir, uh, recurrence also uh, surgery can be done if uh, resectable, sir. It uh, improves the survival rate. So what about radiation therapy? Radiation therapy can also be given, sir. Suppose you have already given radiation the previous uh, primary treatment of the tumor, then you give radiation again. Yes, sir. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe difficult, but you can have the very focused radiation, IMRT in, in, intensity modulated okay. radiation. You can have, give a focused radiation to the area of recurrence only. Okay, so that the toxicity yes. can be reduced. Such modality, yes, but not external beam radiation. Also, if yes, you sir. feel that there is a recurrence, you can try brachytherapy. You know, at the time of surgery, you can introduce the the tubes of the brachytherapy. You can give brachytherapy so that you can reduce the recurrence. Okay. Anyway, surgery yes, definitely the again the choice of treatment. Even if it recurs, surgery definitely yes, choice again. If it's possible to do surgery, that is always best. But, okay. But you need to assess, reassess yes, whether the surgery is going to to benefit this patient. Because many patients will be more at that time. So just for the sake of you know, surgery, create more morbidity. That's a very difficult question you need to answer. You have to take it, uh, you can assess, individually assess and take a decision on that. Okay. The patient is going to benefit and yes, you sir. can definitely surgery is a choice. Yes, sir. Can we go to the next case, sir? Because... One last question, Karan Yeah. Sir? After liver, which is the second organ, which is likely to be seat of metastasis? Lungs, sir. No. Um, peritoneum. Peritoneum. Thank you, sir. Eleni, how can you prevent the ureteric injury during the retroperitoneal tumor dissection? Ureteric injury. What are the various ways that you can protect the ureters? So that is one of the very important thing. Mm-hmm. The retroperitoneal dissection. Can you add some maneuvers in there? Yes, sir. Can you know where are the ureters by anything? Can you put something uh, in there? Stent. The ureteric stenting can be done. Yes, sir. Uh, what is special in the ureteric stenting if it is available to you? You can have the lighted stents. Okay, they will light at the time of the surgery. You can put the okay, lights sir. in that and then you can. And nowadays, any other dye, you know, which dye is put to see for the ureters? Heard of the endocyanin I think green? I think I'm, I'm able to contribute. Yes, sir. You can put the endocyanin in green you know, and then you can yes, see sir. on that that where are the... So these are the few ways by which you can protect the ureters at the time of the surgery. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, then we stop at this. Oh, no, no chemotherapy? You don't use any chemotherapy? Chemotherapy has less role, sir. There is no significant improvement, but chemotherapy as adjuvant uh, can be tried, sir, with, uh, with radiotherapy. What are the drugs used? You commonly used? Adriamycin, iphosphamide, and uh, dacarbacin, uh, mesna. Okay, mesna. Yeah. So, which, one, which one responds better, round cell or stent cell? Sir, round cell, cell. Chemotherapy, sir, for chemotherapy? Yes. Um, not sure, sir. Round cell. So, round cell, yes, sir. So, when, when uh, the question of palliation came, you should first find out, uh, you know, what is the palliation which you are trying to achieve in your patient. That is the most important thing. So, yes, if the patient has got a back pressure hydronephrosis and that is causing problem, yes, you have to treat it with the whatever stenting. And patient has got severe backache infiltration on the retroperitoneal nerve plaque, especially the neural tumors. No, the retroperitoneal yes, neural tumor arising itself from the paravertebral plex. So some of yes, them sir. are extremely difficult to they erode the vertebral body, etc. etc. So that is the time where backache becomes more important. There's a hardly debul- debulking may not going to help. It will cause more bleeding, actually. More it fact, cause more problem to the patient. This has been, I think, yes, already sir. highlighted. So whenever we talk about palliation, including large banquet. But find out what is it palliative complaints which patient has got how to relieve. So for the sake of chemotherapy, I, th- I think it will not help. Maybe a situation of uh, uh, sarcoma uh, of the axial skeleton, shoulder girdle and uh, somewhere, it may amount to some kind of disarticulation or a hypot amputation and all that thing, uh, you know, sinovial sarcoma, especially when it comes like that. Maybe that you have to definitely consider all options before, uh, you know, go for uh, 
this thing. I don't know about retroperitoneal, what exactly the response rate for the chemotherapy. Jailal Haridas probably can. Yeah, enlarged retroperitoneal tumors, valence of tissue sarcomas are not at all chemotherapy. Correct. Not at all chemotherapy. No, not sensitive. So, 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 only for bad sensitive uh, thing I can give. And also, they, uh, they suggest maybe to reduce the size before. Mainly, the indication is in preoperative setting. That's what the, the literature say. Preoperative <laughs> chemo or radiation, they may reduce size and can do. Adjoint setting, there is not much to go unless you have a. Desperate situation where they have nothing to do. Probably, yes. After debulking, again, debulking may help the chemo. Whatever sensitivity is there can help to grow the sensitivity of the chemo. But that the biological chemo is not at all useful in chemo. So, fish you, you, you said this could be a liposarcoma. It arises from where? So, the fatty tissue from the posterior or uh, renal space, sir? Is it a mandatory? It should arise from the fatty tissue? What is, the what is the definition of sarcoma? Sir, arising from mesenchymal tissue. What mesenchymal tissue? Uh, it is a pluripotent mesenchymal tissue. So okay. the, the cells of origin need not be the same when the cells you have differentiation. So you can okay, come to which carcinoma sarcoma will spread to brain? Uh, Alveolar carcinoma. Okay, sir. So the name is derived what, what tissue it is differentiated into rather than from what tissue it is originated from. So pluripotent okay. cell, it will differentiate into lipos, uh, liposites, we call liposarcoma. So rhabdomyocyte, yeah. rhabdomyocyte, liposarcoma, like, like that. Okay, so it's a different. Okay, okay. I think we'll conclude this session. No? Yes, sir. Anybody? Yeah. Sir, Professor Ajay Kana, sir, any closing comment? Kalaranjini, I think you presented very well. Very nice. Congratulations. Okay, nice. Thank you, sir. Sir, she won the first prize in the SECON quiz competition, sir. Oh, in 20, yes, yes, in 22. 22. Nice. Congratulations <laughs> again. Thank you, sir. Srinivasan, sir, will be always there with the Coimbatore. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> sir, all, all pronounced to you, great people like you, sir, and Rajagopal Shana, Haridhar Sites, Ajay Gana, sir. You want to ask any questions to the faculty? Any doubts you can ask, ma'am. Sir. Jay, can I sir? Any sir. No, sir. Uh, At Jay, least, Kalar uh, you should know okay. that uh, what you have uh, not examined in this patient. You understand? So that yes, you sir. make note of it. Like, for example, yes, uh, renal palatability, all that. Those are yes, the sir. points which. Uh, Importance of genitalia when that question was asked, what is that you are looking into it? All that. Please make yes. a note of it. That's how you can improve. All the best. Yes, sir. That's all. Thank you, sir. sir. Your comments, sir. My sir? Your okay, comments, sir. sir. Okay. It's good. I'm happy about the performance. So she has done very well. I also learned something today from others. <laughs> Though I'm quite senior, life is so we are always a lifelong students. So this, the day we think they have, we have, uh, we have learned everything. That way, I think that's the end of the life. <laughs> Great, Thank sir. You, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, good luck, uh, Dr. Kalaranjani. Please stay back Thank for you, the sir. second day. Uh, Manohar, yes, are you, uh, can you switch on your video and share your PowerPoint? Are you okay, ma? Dr. Manohar? Yes, sir. No you are yet unable to hear you, Manohar. You have any challenges? Hello, sir. Can you come a little closer, maybe? We are uh, definitely the voice is much lesser, ma. Hello. <laughs> sir, I'm available now, sir. Better now, but uh, better, definitely sir. we have challenges. We are, not... are you on are you on two devices? No, sir. Okay. Let me come closer to the mic, Manohar, otherwise fine. Hello, sir. 
Yeah, yes. better, but definitely better. audio we is a little challenge. We are we are seeing you in the PowerPoint itself. So how is that? Yes. You, how what what a uh, special thing you are done? Tell me. Pre-recorded, pre-recorded. I think. No, 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 no. It is it is it's live. He is making that as a background and he is bringing it. Yeah, but but the thing is, uh, can I, sir? We are we are seeing the college in back of you. Yeah, but what I am telling is whether that is affecting the voice. That's what I my I want to know. Yeah, yeah it's maybe. not a normal video you see, you know something. Uh, and you, uh, and you, okay, actually, there was a setting uh, which my friend elaborated also. Okay, continue. You can you can hear you. Go now. ahead. Go ahead. Carry on. All the best. Doing your work, sir. Myself, Dr. Manohar Arora, the case. PhD student from Department of General Surgery, BMC Chitrakuta. I'm entering as Dr. Vijaya Kinnar, Professor, Department of General Surgery, BMC. Chitradurga, for actually is Dr. Sharad Devi. Are you presenting a case for Master Dr. Sharad? Yeah, Sharad is a 50 year old male patient, farmer by occupation, Hindu in the by the religion, hailing from Chitradurga. He came with the chief complaints of upper abdominal pain since two months, loss of appetite since two months, early satiety since two months, and mass for abdomen since one month. This year, present again. The patient who was apparently normal two months back came with complaints of upper abdominal pain, which was insidious in onset, non-progressive, and intermittent in nature, then dull aching type, non-radiating, relieved relieved with medication for brief period. Patient also gives history of loss of appetite and early satiety since two months. Patient noticed mass in upper abdomen since one month, which is of same size since then. Patient gives no history of vomiting, nausea, hematemesis, no history of diarrhea, constipation, no history of bleeding stool, black colored stool, no history of jaundice or high colored urine, no history of fever, no history of trauma, and no history of previous history of tuberculosis. Past history: Patient does not have any comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, or asthma. No history of regular medication, no history of previous abdominal surgery. Personal history. Patient is a known alcoholic since 30 years. Consumes 180 ml of whiskey every two to three days. Is of smoking one pack of BD per day since 30 years. Sleep is undisturbed. Regular patient has regular bowel and bladder function. Patient does not have any significant family history. To summarize the history, uh, we had a 58 year old male patient who presented with is of upper abdominal pain since two months, loss of appetite since two months. And at least satiety since two months, and patient had noticed a mass per abdomen since one month. Mm-hmm. Patient gave history of regular alcohol consumption since thirty years. Yeah, uh, hello, Doctor Manohar. Hello, sir. In your first slide, you said the relief on taking medication. Go to the first slide, history. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after yeah, this one. Okay. relieved with medications for brief period which group of drugs this is very important you have to mention okay so i was taking uh, nsaid sir nsaid yes sir. okay so w- what does this signify so there, uh, there could there could be a, a inflammation uh, it means it is not acid peptic disease because the pain of acid peptic disease or any ulcer will aggravate on taking nsaids right so whenever you take a history you have to mention it if the patient cannot tell you then you can say the patient could not give the details of the drugs which group of drugs he is taking right so it's a very okay. important significance of this history that there was relief on taking nsaids okay right so it rules out acid peptic disease or any ulcerative lesion duodenal ulcer or gastric ulcer because the main complaint is only pain in the upper abdomen Okay. Okay. So, from the history, what is your provisional diagnosis? What it could be? So, it could be a uh, pseudo cyst of pancreas, sir, or pancreatic uh, neoplasm, pancreatic carcinoma, or retroperitoneal. From the history, history, history. Yeah, from the history, you are making a diagnosis of pancreas in this case. You said uh, dull aching. It is a yearly satiety. What is the yearly satiety and loss of appetite? Can you explain that? What is the <laughs> satiety and loss of appetite? Sir, uh, release satiety immediately after uh, uh, 
immediately after taking a small amount of food he will be, he will be uh, he can't no, no. take more, more amount of food sare sare is asking what is the reason for early satiety okay what are what the reasons what are the reasons for early satiety so patient cannot early eat won't eat cannot eat is that is it what that's what you are saying is it that? yes sir early patient gets okay satiety feeling okay what are the reasons for the early satiety so could be mass effect mass effect at the stomach mass effect of the stomach means what the stomach mass effect over the stomach or uh, tumor origin origin uh, originating from the stomach Tumor, what type of tumor? Be specific. Hello, sir. Be specific. What tumor originating from the stomach can have an early site? Sir, uh, carcinoma. All carcinoma should have. What type of carcinoma? See, early site is an indication that patient's stomach cannot uh, accommodate, distend and accommodate. The extension is not there. The extension is not possible. That is why early site. So, what type of carcinoma will have a distension problem? If there is an antral tumor, then the distension is still possible. Yes, if there is antral malignancy, distension is possible. What type of carcinoma of stomach will have this problem with distension? Or the stomach cannot distend. See, have you heard of the diffuse carcinoma? The what do you call that? Linatus plastica, no? What is linatus plastica? Hello, are you there? Yes, sir. No. in linatus plastica what is happen it's a diffuse carcinoma of stomach the patient stomach will be like leather bottle stomach isn't it not distend another okay. problem is any anything pressing from outside you know any mass effect mass coming pressing from extra luminal mass for compression of the stomach so in these conditions you can have early appetite loss of appetite is a maybe a luminal problem i mean mucosal problem mucosal lesion or any any general illness sometimes patient will have loss of appetite even pancreatitis anything you, you have said non radiating why do you ask that history non radiating in the history sir uh, if you uh, if it was originating from pancreas it could be radiating to back sir no that is what you all you say there is not nothing to get the pancreas but you are making a diagnosis probably it's a pancreatic carcinoma that means no, you are why, uh, you know the diagnosis and making the diagnosis yeah why, why did you say it is acute pancreatitis in history there is what are the points in favor of acute pancreatitis was pseudocyst will develop only after that huh? you are saying Pseudocyst pancreas. Ah, uh, it gives a significant history of uh, alcohol. Alcohol is. Alcohol is, but he is taking regularly alcohol, and mm -hmm. you said insidious onset pain, dull aching type. Acute pancreatitis pain is usually not a dull aching type pain, mm -hmm. right? And then you mm -hmm. said it is intermittent in nature. During the acute phase of the pain, it is not intermittent in nature. It will be a continuous pain for. if it is mild it may subside in even 5 to 7 days if it is moderate to severe pancreatitis it may be there for 15 days 20 days depending on the severity of the pancreatitis okay right so at okay. the uh, this point i don't think you can consider pancreas so maybe yeah there are other possibilities to consider here you have to tell <laughs> the anatomical possibility and possible pathological possibility yes the anatomical uh, it could uh, as i said uh, previously it could be the extra extra luminal sir any mass which is giving uh, okay. the compression uh, extra luminal which is giving a uh, pressure effect over the uh, stomach or mm -hmm. intra luminal could be uh, adenoma carcinoma of stomach or hypertrophy of uh, uh, hypertrophy of pylorus sir or even uh, hypertrophy of the pylorus what do you mean by that What is hypertrophy of the pylorus? Which condition you get hypertrophy of the pylorus? No, the Adult. patient is having upper abdominal pain, vomiting, yes, and dull aching pain. I think which is relieved by the uh, some medication. That is the thing, isn't it? So you mentioned it's an acid, so it cannot be an acid. Peptic ulcer disease, so something else. And patient is feeling any mass in the upper abdomen? Sir, uh, see, last since uh, one uh, since one month, he has uh, you know, he has noticed the uh, mass in the mass in the abdomen, sir. Since last one month. And mass in the upper abdomen. Okay. So we, in view of that, what are the other possibility? Patient is having a mass himself is feeling with uh, vomiting. What is that type of vomiting patient is having? 
Asking the question, what do you think? In this case, you said there is a mass is there. <coughs> yes, sir. You don't have a very very classical symptoms of any gastrointestinal problem. But that is, uh, what are the other possibilities you think? Sir, uh, could be a uh, retro retro peritoneal uh, mass or retro peritoneal sarcoma. Okay. Or could be aortic aneurysm, sir. Oh what uh, what is the other organ present in that area retroperitoneal organ could it be the carcinoma pancreas also oh, it could be uh, carcinoma pancreas also yeah so it could be because there is a just simply dull aching pain associated with anorexia no features of gastric outlets obstruction so maybe carcinoma of the body of the pancreas can have this presentation Large mass. There may not be jaundice if it is not involving the head part. Okay. Oh. Can you give a gist on this? Yes. Gist. Gist. Yes. 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 Sir, it can be this. Sir, this from. Uh, See the problem. What do you consider here? There is a mass palpated by the patient himself. That means it must be a big mass. Otherwise, the patient is not have sensitive enough to palpate the mass. So it's a big yes, enough sir. mass in the left upper abdomen. The patient is not having an obstructive symptom. No vomiting. No hematemis. Nothing. So we we need to corroborate and say from which organ it's maybe from stomach. If it's from stomach, it cannot be from the mucosal aspect. It's such a such a large mucosal yeah. lesion. It can present with some other problems, isn't it? Bleeding, something, vomiting, something will be there. So so all we have to can say is maybe it's a extra luminal problem which is compressing the stomach, producing early satiety and all these things. So what are the conditions, the organs which can produce the uh, compression from outside? Maybe from retroperitoneum, as you said. Maybe gist, as some sir mentioned, a gist. It can compress. It can be completely uh, extra luminal. It can be subserosal gist compressing the stomach, or even from the pancreas. If you have maybe pancreatic adenocarcinoma or a pan any other pancreatic lesion, pseudocystis one, any other tumor, you know, pancreas can have a large lesions like this. The, the all this mucinous histidinoma, all this because more commonly ladies, not common, much common in males, but it can have mucinous histidinoma, which is very common in body and tail of the pancreas. All this can have. So at this point, we don't know some upper abdominal problem. Okay, I think you should proceed now. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, with the general physical examination, we had a middle-aged male patient, moderately built and nourished. Conscious, cooperative, and orient, uh, well oriented to time, place, and person. Pulse was 68 beats per minute. Normal rhythm, good volume, and uh, good volume and character. With no radio radial and no radio femoral delay. BP was 110 by 80 mm Hg. In measured in right arm in supine position. Respiratory was rate was 16 by 30 beats per minute. Abdominal pressure was high. Temperature was high for blood. SpO2 uh, saturation was 98 percent of room air. And BMI was 16 kg meter square. A moderately built, well nourished individual having a BMI 16. So, moderately built, uh, poorly nourished. Sir. What is the you have put as a moderately built, nourished fellow having a BMI of 16 of the age? No, sir. It was a poorly nourished. Sir. Poorly nourished is the typo. Hmm. Well, the patient you already said is having a anorexia for two months. Sir. Yes, sir. So how nourished? Not uh, patient cannot be well nourished if the patient is not 
having early satiety and anorexia and all these things right yes sir he was poorly in the rest sir uh, so even then cysteine is very very low i mean they have not seen the patient cysteine is cysteine is very low cysteine is a toxic type of patient yeah very very yes, low sir. why have you mentioned spo2 covid no sir so why do you do, do it regularly yes sir regular uh, spo2 uh, you measure regularly in wards yes sir yes, we do measure unnecessarily you are uh, inviting trouble yes diverting uh, questions uh, also don't put all those radio frequency delay radio commercial delay all that you don't do that normally yeah, we are not having a cardiac assessment cardiac yes yes right okay there is a dictum error of omission is better than error of commission if at all you have to do error okay sir go ahead go ahead there is no sign of uh, pale it rest no sign of sinusitis clubin no sign of lymphadenopathy at minima a paradan infection the abdomen looks covered with fullness of epigastrium and umbilical cord central and inverted all quadrants move equally with respiration there is no visible scar in gauze vein or sinus no visible peristalsis or pulsation seen corneal orifice was normal external genitalia was normal no supraclavicular fullness seen and palpation the abdomen was soft no. dr manohar just talk uh, you said uh, abdomen is scaphoid with epigastric fullness yes sir okay okay abhi the abhi the two point is it possible it is a contradictory term you are using scaphoid abdomen is in a in a lean thin individual without any abdominal mass and you are yourself saying it is there is a fullness and the with the pulp uh, mass you could palpate also as patient could palpate and then you are saying there is a scaphoid abdomen uh, so you, you don't use these two terms right if there is a fullness don't use the scaphoid abdomen scaphoid abdomen is a normal abdomen in a lean thin individual Okay. Even in a overweight individual, you will not get a scaphoid abdomen. What sinuses you looked in the abdomen? Sir, you have said no sinuses. What are the sinuses you looked in the abdomen? Sir, any umbilical uh, sinuses? Sir, uh, already you mentioned about umbilicus. Umbilicus you already said. And uh, why do you think there should be sinuses? Is it a very common finding that you give a comment there is no sinuses in the? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So Sarah, Sarah is very clear. Sir. You would say error of omission is better than commission. Don't yeah. that just like that protein don't present. Yeah. Okay. What and, you are as, looking for? But... As in last case, Harida sir said, not mention that. Do not mention that all quadrants move equally. Right. Yeah. It, 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 they, all quadrants do not move equally. Right. Yeah. So it, it is a. These are all all pro, uh, proformas you have misfitted in our mind. All PGs, majority of the students. Yes. yes. So finally, do something different. from the students which is not there in the your your format this is not a format given in any books or any any teacher will give you this format so please remove this format from all your memories all of you all of the students who are listening to this okay. also one more point i want to say anything you say in the exam any point mm-hmm. any word you utter in the exam you are liable to answer to that question a question is liable to possibly come on that point oh, yeah. you are liable to answer so don't casually mention anything yes you just casually <laughs> expect to get away with anything you mention okay or so any examiner can pick up from anything you have written there in fact can... examiner next question is always probably from your last sentence or word or your uh, answer yes. most of the times yes okay. always you remember that okay so that way you can even guide an examiner if you know very exactly well exactly exactly yeah. sir you know something very well you can say give a clue to the examiner yes. examiner will catch that you can be a very good student or candidate on that okay yes i'll i'll give you one example if you are asked causes of some uh, symptom or or whatever things the answers which you know better you give pause at the end of that ans- that that uh, reason or yeah. you uh, you mention it last it will be there in the examiner's mind these are the strategies tactics i am telling you from examiner's point yes sir yes, yes, so and it is ve- this is a very well presentation a very well uh, organized presentation from student so no examiner comes with his own questions on the day of exam Correct. so by and large they are they are arising from whatever you say and yes. you can justify yes. whatever you have said that will be fair enough correct okay carry okay. on okay carry on 
sir and palpation the abdomen was soft there was no guarding no rigidity again again guarding and rigidity mm-hmm. when there is guarding you cannot say rigidity when there is rigidity you cannot make a guarding when there mm-hmm. when there is oh, guarding where do you want to put there is rigidity and you have not ha huh, not mentioned tenderness soft non tender that is enough yeah on palpation there was a solitary non tender oval shaped mark measuring 10 to 12 cm noted in epigastrium extending into left hypochondrium extending uh, 6 cm below the left midclavicular line and superior border could not be made out this uh, the mass was of a smooth surface with firm consistency the mobility was restricted the finger could be inserted below the uh, left costal margin you have said the mass is in the epigastrium and you have yes, said it is 6 cm below the uh, it has to be costal margin extending to left hypochondrium sir sir extending from epigastrium to the left hypochondrium is it moving with the how much area is there in the left chondrium left chondrium is a very small area the two of a 16 bmi yes see the left hypochondrium is an area lateral to the midclavicular region so it's a very as sir mentioned it's a very small area okay very small so there's a misconcept again we people that both hypochondria and both iliac fossa are very small area in the other areas are bigger area so when you describe a lesion you have to properly fit into the particular area again a casual mentioning of various areas will be you will be in trouble okay so here is probably you mentioned epigastric mass extending to left hypochondria okay tending to 12 cm is it moving at respiration you didn't mention anything uh. Oh, sir, uh, a mass in the upper abdomen, mm-hmm. epigastrium, and all you. We expect you to say whether it's moving or not moving. Is it? Yes, sir. Moving or and not? Then, not even. It is not not uh, not moving with respiration, sir. Not moving with respiration. And you said mobility is restricted. Mobility is restricted. So what, what do you mean by that? What do you mean? Or in which direction do you mean to say? In which axis the lump would be little bit moved? Because then you will be in trouble. Because question will be what are the lumps which epigastric lumps which are freely mobile? And not moving okay. with respiration, both will come. Did you expect this mass to move with the uh, with the freely mobile? You know what is the reason for it may not yes, move? Yes, if it is that, what if will it, be? What will be the why it is not moving? It could be. Uh... No, what are the things required for a mass to have an intrinsic? Oh. What are you checking is the intrinsic mobility, isn't it? Yes, You're looking sir. for intrinsic mobility. That's why mobility is restricted, isn't it? Yes, is it? Sir. Yes, or no? yes, no? Yes, sir. Okay. So what are the characteristics or what are the requirements for intrinsic mobility to happen? Sir, uh, the organ of origin or uh, the attachment. Yeah, it should have a long attachment for a pedicle or a liver. Okay, leverage to move. Should have adequate yes. space to move. and should not be attached or infiltrated to the neighboring structure these are the three or four characteristics isn't it here you say this mass is extending to the uh, the costal margin it upper border it cannot palpate yes, if it's a freely mobile with a long pedicle will it move have will it have an intrinsic mobility no sir there was no, not much of space to... yeah because it's extending into the subcostal region the upper border is not palpable maybe it's stuck there maybe that's one of the reasons i'm not i'm just speculating i don't know we have not seen this patient okay yes this other reason why you are very particular of insinuation on the left costal margin not on the right costal margin uh, the mass was uh, covering the, the left hypochondrium uh, okay so right side it's not it's not crossing the midline No, sir, it's not, it's not, it was not crossing the midline. Sir. So epigastrium? Sir, epigastrium and left side. Sir? No, then, then it is crossing the midline or not? In epigastrium, sir. Hmm. No, sir, it was not uh, crossing the midline, sir. So it is a, fully the mouth is in the left side? Yes, sir. Uh, it was occupying half of the epigastrium and uh, the left side of the front line, sir. Right. Okay. Continue. Continue. Continue your presentation. So, with the head raising, sir, the mass because the mass became uh, less prominent with doubtful movement with uh, respiration. There was no organ of injury, no renal angle tenderness. External genital level was normal, and uh, all original orifices were normal. 
head raising test stroke full movement with respiration i don't know what you were doing with that head raising test the mask became uh, less prominent no why there is doubtful movement why yeah the inspection itself is something you said that all the theory of counter is moving so uh, the uh, the mask uh, i couldn't make out whether it was uh, moving with respiration no why you are mixing these two things becoming less prominent with doubtful movement with respiration you mean to say that on this carnet test head rising test the masses become more mobile no, no examiner would like to have a doubtful pg yes. when you are trying to put a doubtful doubtful then it is also doubtful and also head rising test is nothing to do with the movement with the respiration it's only to movement, test why you are yeah you are combining two things to that movement only. with respiration it is not to check movement with respiration not to movement with the respiration don't don't mention don't confuse all this okay you are com- combining various things and you don't confuse it is nothing to do with the respiration movement or otherwise uh, sir mentioned you are you going to say when you check this carnet test it become more mobile or something like that the tumor become became more more started having more movement with respiration no 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 i think you avoid that i said but okay this actually became... there is nothing uh, lack of knowledge it is all logic whatever you whatever uh, you are missing is probably lack of logic application yeah it is not that you don't know what you have mentioned but you you should have thought it very carefully and before presentation you should have give raise questions in your mind only why i have written this and what is the meaning then then probably this mistakes won't happen okay. okay dr manohar why you have checked the renal angle tenderness is there any complaint in the pain in the left lumbar region no, or in the back so why do you check it complaint is there is pain in the upper abdomen mass is in the upper abdomen now my question will be what will be the pathologies which will have renal angle tenderness with mass in the epigastric and the left hypogonadal mm-hmm. yeah do you understand my question yes sir those when they simple we mentioned no, when you raise questions and you will have no, it should not if you don't have answer that's a problem okay okay sir. so unnecessary things you are writing and you are raising questions yeah. on that and you have to you should be able to answer that's all okay okay sir. right so don't drop, put up face yeah trap face trap face because it, you are now feeling a mass on the left side what is the space yes, called trap space trap trap space sir i think i didn't get you sir trap space i not heard of that no sir okay perfect Okay. It's a crescentic shape space, and if there is a that normally it will present as if tan dullness, then there is a some mass is there on. So there is importance <laughs> on that trap space and how you are examining it and what is the boundaries. Hmm. Go ahead. A percussion test was done not over the region of the mass and rest of the abdomen was present. An auscultation normal bowel was heard. A parietal examination was normal. No, there was no supraclavicular lymph node. Why did you ask it for the bowel sound? How much was the bowel sound? Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. What? What is your bowel sound? Hello, be well. Normal bowel sound means what? Ah, uh, in order. Sir, the. Uh, Tell me, sir. What do you mean by normal bowel sound? The number of the peripheral peripheralic movement. How much? How much is the normal? Hello. go and here see the bowel sound don't just put in that uh, normal bowel sound and then you will also come to the examination without this test and you will say normal bowel sound mm-hmm. no no i'll advise i will i will advise you to have a stetho whenever you go to ward rounds i am very sure you are not having stetho and if you are at all having you are not putting it into the ears 
please please listen to the bowel sounds of a hernia patient who has been operated pre operatively listen to the bowel sounds of a uh, of a uh, colicky abdomen mm-hmm. and then you see, or prostate or renal stone hello and then and then you can say oh, yeah, right. even if you have not read probably you should be able to answer what is normal bowel sounds hmm? yeah, that's a mistake it's not even abnormal that's a very good point unless you know the normal i don't know it's not normal okay okay so you have to look for it okay then okay. hello paridi hello sir hello sir yes yes don't get disheartened just continue with the same yeah, yeah. we are just pointing out certain problem that's all okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so so that you know uh, what are the deficiency you can improve on that right okay sir uh, just note down these points or you can hear this presentation later on that where you are just for your drastic improvement in next presentation yeah. don't worry yeah. the thing is that all there to make mistakes anything casually that's for whatever you say you have to plan it that's all okay don't that's make all. anything casually that's all let me add on one sentence yes sir sir i am dr vidya dr kinnad let me add on one sentence yes sir uh, am i allowed to speak yes yes sir please yeah. sir please please see i have pushed manohar aradhya force him to present a paper since i am there in the critical care is three weeks that's all i have pestered him forced him that you must present a paper so that you will yeah. the situation yeah. is last one and a half years they hardly had any admissions in the surgical ward and yeah. one and a half year old for surgical pg with yes. only corona nothing else so <laughs> it is because of my pestering him yes. Yes. that is good sir that is good sir it is, good, is, good, sir. It is, is good, good the sir. same scenario everywhere sir almost the same for pg i know he has committed lot of mistakes i was on youtube and you can't come no problem sir no problem no problem no problem i'm uh, definitely i will assure you that you will improve in his next presentation It is my... no, sir, he is good. He is no, only no, we are just putting something. Yeah, yeah. The that purpose is. of purpose of uh, advice is only for improvement of all yeah, people, yeah. not only him. It is I, only for that. I told him, even if you commit mistakes, you are not going to fail in that exam. Exactly. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. Better, yes. Better to commit before exams. Yeah, that is fantastic. I really thank Dr. Kanagavelu for having given chance to my boy, Anwar uh, Aradhya, for presentation in this case. I am extremely thankful to the whole team who have given him very good. Uh, uh information and what you know, we should do all those things i really appreciate all of you sir. as a professor of as a professor of aradhya yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah dr vidya there thank you very much but yeah. please uh, insist and tell all these pgs to yeah. log on to this this program is every friday happening since two years i, I will ensure that it will happen not only no, not Ajay only Ajay Ajay. Ajay. i joined uh, i joined chitrasuga medical college last month three weeks back Okay, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. As a professor of surgery, so I'll see that every week they will log in. Okay. okay. Yeah. And okay. if at all they cannot log in, it is always available on YouTube. At least the yeah. same week they should they should review it. <laughs> okay. So back backlog also there. All the all the videos yes. are there. Yes, so if, uh, backlog is also all two years uh, classes are there, but better that they finish it in that week. Otherwise, it will be just like the Xerox uh, Xerox is of uh, some literature. Yeah, yeah. Piled up. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Not if you have to auscultate the bowel sound. Do you know where do you auscultate in the abdomen? Mm-hmm. Come on to auscultate the bowel sounds. Where you will auscultate? What is the best place to auscultate the bowel sound? Mm-hmm. Can I even try to find out some voice is coming? Miss. Some cross talk is there. Ladies, ladies' voice. Yeah, that is a Galaxy M fifty two five G. Please mute. Yeah. Okay. Manod, you do it on the right paramnical region. Okay. If you have to auscultate at one place, then the best place is the right paramnical region. Okay, you do not auscultate on the left side because the aorta is there, and because most of the small bowel which is there, it is in the central part of the abdomen. Did what you find this lump is a pulsatile lump or not? Pulsatile. Was this lump pulsatile or not? No, sir, not not pulsatile, sir. What type of the pulsations you can get in such a lump which is there in the epigastrium? Sir, it could be uh, transmitted the. Uh... Pulsation, sir. 
or it may be transmitted or it may be expansile sir okay so how will you differentiate whether it is expansile pulsation or a transmitted pulsation <clears throat> Sir, with a with a, with a three finger test. Sir. In the abdomen, do you do a three three yes, finger yes, test? Yes. That is for the peripheral. Okay, like yes, somebody has got in the extremity, there is a lump which is there, but not for the abdominal lump. For the abdominal lump, what you will do to know whether it is expansile pulsation or it is a transmitted pulsation. <clears throat> Which lump gives the expansile pulsation in the epigastrium? Sir, lump arising from uh, abdominal aorta. Aortic aneurysm, sir. Aortic aneurysm. Aneurysm. Mm -hmm. aneurysm. Well, like a pseudo pancreatic cyst can give a transmitted pulsation there. So you make the patient in the lateral position or in the knee elbow position. Okay. If the pulsations they disappear, then it is. Transmitted pulsations, you know, if the patient goes in the lateral position or in the prone position. Once that lump is, becomes away from aorta, that will go off. So, transmitted no. pulsation will disappear. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, proceed. Okay. Yeah. Proceed. Yeah. Other systems, CBS, S1 and S2, heart source over high, and RS bilateral double vascular breast sounds over high. No new, new focal rule is going to be Well, summarizing, we had a 58-year-old male patient who presented with history of upper abdominal pain since two months, loss of appetite since two months, early satiety since two months, mass per abdomen since one month, with history of regular alcohol consumption since 30 years. On examination, our retroperitoneal mass occupying epigastrium and left hypochondria region, which are not splintered, smooth surface, and firm in consistency with otherwise normal per abdominal and systemic examination. How do you come to the conclusion that it is retroperitoneal mass? Yes. No, you never said any examination to say that it is a retroperitoneal mass. You only said a tracing test. No, how do you make that it is a retroperitoneal mass? Not the what are your reasons to say it is retroperitoneal You are just asking your reasons. Don't, don't worry. You, you say what are the reasons. Why did you say it is retroperitoneal? Sir, uh, the mass was... Uh, uh, it was not mobile with uh, it, was, it was not moving with respiration, sir. And with the uh, hydrogen test, uh, so you uh, say retroperitoneal mass will not move with the respiration at all. Why a swelling? Why why a mass move with the respiration? What is the reason? Any mass, any swelling, any mass, any organ move with the, why any organ or mass move with the respiration? Any uh, touching the in continuation of touching the liver, the diaphragm or touching diaphragm. The, it is touching the diaphragm, isn't it? Diaphragm is the something moving with the respiration. Mm -hmm. Such a large retroperitoneal mass, which is almost the upper border, you cannot palpate. Maybe it's even touching the diaphragm <coughs> on contact. So you can even if it's retroperitoneum, sometimes you can expect a little bit of movement with the respiration. Okay. So it is not a hard and fast rule that retroperitoneum means no movement with the respiration. That's nothing like that. Okay, retroperitoneum because of the restricted uh, mobility facility, it because covered by retroperitoneum, it may not move like an intra-abdominal mass, intraperitoneal mass, agree. a little bit. Okay, that's one point in favor possibly about retroperitoneum. Any other thing you can want to, you want to say retroperitoneum in this case, just because it's not moving, be, not, not moving alone is okay, point. One point, one point is whenever you are asked no, why retroperitoneal or intraperitoneal, you start with the history, which is in favor of that Diagnosis which or which possibility yes. you are keeping. Start from so, the there was history of uh, early satiety, sir, which uh, which could be due to the pressure effect. Hmm. The patient is feeling a large mass without any other symptoms. Okay, so these things one may be corroborative evidence to say retroperitoneum. So as uh, sir was mentioning, you should do some other test to say whether the retroperitoneum or intraperitoneum, which I think is not easy to do in a yes. more event patient. Uh, we, we, we don't advise for the knee elbow yeah. position, but at least you can yes. put the patient on the lateral position yeah, and lateral do that. Position. You get to the lateral position and examine whether it's a swelling falling forward or not. Okay. Okay. To do. Anyway, okay, retroperitoneal. What are the anatomical possible retroperitoneal from where? Retroperitoneal sarcoma, you want to say? 
something there the many types of pains in pancreas is it maybe due to obstruction of the pancreatic duct producing pancreatic hypertension or maybe due to infiltration of the retroperitoneal nerves producing back pain radiation to the back okay ductal hypertension or parenchyma and inflammation all this can have pain this pain okay capsule infiltration okay so there may be a lot of cause for pain Okay, so retro retroperitoneal yeah. pancreas. These are the parallel differential diagram. Will you consider gist? As somebody, as uh, some of us mentioned, yeah. for gist, is it possible to have a gist as a diagnosis? Can you think in terms of gist? What is gist, Manohar? Uh, gastrointestinal stomal tumor. What is our origin of cells of origin in gist? Interstitial cells of Kajal. Have we heard of that? Kajal cells. Okay. Anyway, Certainly. what is the layer in from which the stomach? Suppose they are arising from stomach. What is the layer from which it can arise from? What are the layers of stomach? Sir, mucosa, sir, mucosa. Sir, uh, Usually, it's from the muscular propria. Yeah? It sometimes can be from mucosa also. Some muscular propria layer. So it's not from the mucosa. Definitely, it's not a mucosal tumor. So you may not get the mucosal symptoms like bleeding, uh, ulceration, and all. Rarely you can get ulcerated, but a, that's a complication of the disease. Okay. So you consider this sort, isn't it? Okay. So, go ahead. How you are going to manage? How we are going to confirm and diagnose diagnosis in the stations? Sir, uh, for the diagnosis, uh, uh, initially we can uh, go with the uh, ultrasound abdomen, sir. But for the confirmation, uh, we can go for contrast and then uh, CT, uh, CT CT scan abdomen. Now, when you when you say about an investigation, what do you expect from the investigation also you should say. Don't just stop by saying contrast and hand CT. What do you expect? You have to continue. You you should talk. You know, what are you going to expect in the CT scan? What are the findings you expect? Positive findings and negative findings. And like that, you have to talk. So what do you expect in CT? So, uh, provisional diagnosis you have. We have, we have. we have got the ultrasound done. Sir, so we have got a CT scan. Uh, See, whenever you advise an investigation, either it should be for diagnosis or to improve the assessment of the treatment. So now you, this diagnosis you are trying to do is for knowing the plane of the swelling as well as where it is located, the mass is located. So ultrasound and CT, both of them are going to tell you that where the location of mass is. Whenever you find the location of the mass is the histology that is available at that place or the tissue that is available at that place will be the culprit for. The tumor or whatever specified lesion we just find. You got the ultrasound or CT done? Yes, CT scan. CT scan was done, sir. What, what's the finding? What, what are the findings? Findings, sir. Sir, uh, we found uh, we found a mass, sir. Uh, yes. Which uh, mass? Sir. Where is the mass? Oh, you yeah, have the report. Sir, uh, the mass was uh, pancreas. Well defined solar system. You can you read this report, please? Yes, sir. You read the report. Ah, please, sir. 
There are one small instructions. Defense. One small instruction for you. Don't ever show the name of the person. Not where is that? Okay, read. Uh, there was a large, well-defined uh, solid cystic lesion seen arising at the center of the body of pancreas. Sir. Measuring uh, 8.9 and cross uh, 11.6 cross 14.5 centimeters. The lesion shows peripheral enhancement and central non-enhancing area. The lesion was extending is extending posteriorly up to uh, prevertebral region and displacing the stomach and duodenum dio- dio- anterior superiorly. The lesion is supplied by branches of celiac artery. The lesion is displacing the vessels laterally, abutting the portal vein, posterior and compressing the left renal vein. Manohar, I, I, I have now judged your problem. You know, knew the report, CT scan. And that's why you stuck to the diagnosis of retroperitoneal sarcoma and pancreatic tumor. Always go with an open mind that from this history, what am, what it, you, your diagnosis may be 180 degrees <coughs> to what your investigation suggests. We don't mind. Right. Yeah. We don't know examiner minds. It, it, the diagnosis has least importance unless and until it is not going contradictory to what your history taking and examination findings are. I think every examiner will like, agree with this statement. Yeah. Based on the diagnosis, you have built the story. This CT scan, we can still argue it is a gist. Or a posterior wall gist. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. don't say, you don't get stuck with the CT scan. You go exactly. to clinical examination. So this, this report, I can argue it is still a gist. Posterior wall of the stomach is compressing on the pancreas. Maybe the plane is lost. So CT is not picking up the... The origin can be still a gist of from the arising of the posterior wall of the stomach with the celiac artery or the supplying branches supplying all this could be a gist part of a gist. Okay, so don't mention, don't get stuck with the CT. As Sir Mac rightly mentioned, don't go retrograde. Retrospective analysis is not what you want. You want a prospective analysis. Well, you go sure. with the, commit mistakes and correct and go. Even if you commit a mistake, no problem. You can get it corrected. Okay. You don't might not have kept retroperitoneal tumor as a diagnosis and it may turn out to we don't mind yes for that only we are doing CT scan right so the beautiful part is pancreas is also retroperitoneal yes but i don't know why the dd they have given primary retroperitoneal sarcoma as yes. a diagnosis i don't know yes yes this is undigestible yeah, there is a secondary retroperitoneal sarcoma <laughs> Okay. Uh, now we have a question. Can we like what is primary retroperitoneal tumor and what are secondary? I'm not really not this one. Yeah. Like, uh, when do you call a retroperitoneal tumor a primary retroperitoneal tumor? And what is a secondary retroperitoneal tumor? The so secondary uh, retroperitoneal tumor is uh, from a metastasis. Sir. No, no. When, when it arises from a retroperitoneal organ, then you can call it a secondary retroperitoneal mass, right? Because it is arising from a... Truly speaking, retroperitoneal tumor means when you exclude the retroperitoneal organ origin. Like uh-huh. your pancreas is a retroperitoneal structure, but you don't call it a true retroperitoneal tumor. But it's a carcinoma pancreas, right? Uh-huh. So true retroperitoneal means liposarcoma, sarcomas, your schwannomas, neurofibromas, paraganglionomas, which are not arising from your kidney, not from your adrenal gland, pancreas, pancreas yeah. right? No, no so that is your glands. No name uh-huh. glands. Not even nodes. Yeah. Not even nodes. So no when you exclude... Huh. When you exclude that thing, then it is known as primary retroperitoneal tumor, right? Okay. So how do you differentiate it from a uh, in a radiological investigation? Whether it is rising from, like it's similarly in this case, rising from a pancreas or it is rising, it is a uh, primary retroperitoneal tumor. Hello. Sir, sir I need to, you need to look for the plane, sir. Whether we can... Uh... Because the pancreas Hello. separately from the mass. Uh, am I not audible? Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Sir, you are audible, sir. You are audible. Yeah. Huh. So how how do you, what is the sign in the CT scan? That this tumor sometimes the tumor is so large and the organ is small from which it is arising. How do you differentiate it? Is a
it is crescent sign or organ embedded sign right because as discussed in the previous case sarcomas and these mesenchymal tumors they are pushing in nature so they, hmm. they create a crescent sign on the pushing organ okay sir okay and while if the organ is the origin it will it is embedded in that mass that is it is rising from the that retroperitoneal organ that is how you differentiate on the ct scan whether it is rising from any retroperitoneal organ or it is a mesenchymal uh, retroperitoneal mass right okay, now now mahan manohar i think we'll move a little fast there is a retrogastric or anterior to pancreas there is a mass that's what i said ct scan is showing isn't it retrogastric yes, pushing the stomach anteriorly and lower the anterior superiorly <clears throat> how are you going to proceed what are you, what are you going to do with this any what else you do? ct scan is done which is showing a retrogastric or pancreatic mass whatever so what how do you do and it is from the body of the pancreas is not from the head is it so we take mm-hmm. it from the pancreas from the body what else you do do how will you proceed so we can uh, get a ct angio then uh, for the vascularity sir angio okay what way it will help you so to, to look for the vascularity sir Okay, it's a vascular tumor. Vas- vascular particle is there. There is vascularity is there. That little bit of necrosis is there. It is showing vascularity or arising from the celiac branch. Maybe splenic artery branch is supplying this tumor. The point is whether you would you like to get a histopathological diagnosis or not. That's the question. Whether yes, or, so, what will you do? So we, what can uh, be done what can be done nowadays a, a, a guided biopsy can be done sir. what How? guided oh, what guided biopsy so ct uh, usd guided or uh, ct guided biopsy anything so, else transabdominal you mean transabdominal ct guided biopsy any any better modality nowadays sir uh, endoscopic yeah endoscopic is it ultrasound you can say if it is not a luminal lesion us So what is the problem if you do transabdominal biopsy of the nephi? Sir, uh, we'll be entering uh, into the peritoneal cavity and uh, hmm. we'll be infiltrating uh, the retroperitoneal mass, uh, retroperitoneal tumor into the uh, peritoneal cavity. Simply, simply saying, you will make an operable lesion in an operable one. Isn't it? If you break the capsule, away, especially if it's a gist and all, what they say, if you break the moment you break the capsule, it is considered as a metastatic gist. Okay, so. Yeah. and and most of the times you won't get the proper diagnosis proper diagnosis also you don't get a proper diagnosis so until it is proven that it is inoperable if the ct is not showing any signs of inoperability there is no metastasis no infiltration it is freely operable so eu is is acceptable because we are not violating the peritoneum you are only going through the lumen and lumen through the lumen only you puncturing the tumor directly so the spillage of tumor cells is almost nil but the problem is the diagnosis yield will be less also so eus facility guided biopsy fnas is there you can proceed otherwise transabdominal eus will you transabdominal fnas will you try in this case answer will be answer will be no because of the seemingly operable status of tumor and uh, so you don't want to matter uh, disseminate the tumor okay right. so what will you do suppose there are two possibility one is supposed to the stomach gist or a pancreatic tumor isn't it Suppose it's pancreatic tumor, what will you do? If it's a so, pancreas, what are the possibilities? What are the pathological possibilities? Sir, it could be a uh, cystic or carcinoma, sir, or capillary. Uh, is it male or female? Male. Sir, male patient. Sir. So, cystic or carcinoma is common in male. Epithelial Epith- 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 tumor. What are the? There are many names for that. Solid pseudo capillary epithelial pancreatic. What are the? Can you name at least two? There are many names: Franz tumor, Hamoudi's tumor. How many tumor names are there? Which is very rare. There is an age-wise criteria also. You know, all these are commonly seen in females. The solid pseudo capillary is seen in young daughters. Okay, daughters. And MCA, that mucinous cyst adenoma carcinoma, is seen in mothers. Okay, serous cyst adenoma cystic neoplasm is seen in grandmothers. That's what you, how you remember: daughters, mothers, and grandmothers. Okay. So all yes, are you? you... You have to repeat that. That is a good. Yeah, solid pseudo papillary tumors seen in daughters, 
Okay. It's not a pseudopapillary. That is France tumor. Mucinous system with cystic neoplasm seen in mothers and serous sister neoplasm seen in grandmothers. These are only. all common in females. Yeah. And uh, only cystic neoplasm of pancreas, which is more common in males, is the IPMN. IPMN is more common in males. Okay, IPMN is more common in all others are common in females, right? But it's only co more common. It's not unheard of. You can still have it in males. It's not nothing like that. Okay. So it could be mucinous from. Can it be adenocarcinoma from the pancreas? What will be the presentation of adenocarcinoma? Such a large mass presenting as adenocarcinoma. Well, it's very possible. Patient is very moribund. It's all possible. Body produces symptoms very late. If it's from the head of the pancreas, the because of obstetric jaundice, they present early. Which one will have a better prognosis? Body, pan, tail of the adenocarcinoma or head of the pancreas adenocarcinoma? Uh, head of the, uh, uh, head of the pancreas. Sir. Better prognosis. Why? Sir, uh, the patient will be getting the symptoms uh, early, sir. Very good. That's, a, that's the thing, isn't it? Uh, the body and tail, they'll attribute the symptoms, vague presentation, pain, uh, weight of low weight loss. They go around uh, by various places. Finally, they do CT, they find out the mass. By the time, it may be almost inoperable. Okay. So, comparatively, head of the pancreas should be. Suppose the operable pancreatic lesion, what do you do? No signs of what is the what, what procedure you will do? Sir, uh, triple procedure or. Uh... This, this case, this, this case. case, this case, this body, case. body and tail. So you have to tell us, so the operability is pancreatectomy. Isn't what pancreatectomy you do? I'm, I'm helping you. You just need to put an ad adjective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, distal pancreatectomy, isn't it? What do you mean by distal pancreatectomy? From uh, the body and the tail. Removal of the pancreas towards the left of the portal vein in superior mesenteric vein, isn't it? You remove that and you distal pancreatectomy. So you may have heard of the operable pancreatic malignancy, borderline operable, inoperable, and all this with the head of the body. What, you know, what do you mean? When we just say it's a non resectable body of the table, carcinoma of the body of the pancreas. What are the signs of non-operability? Sir, infiltration, uh, infiltration to the mesenteric vein, sir. Infiltration to? Mesenteric vein. Mesenteric vein on the okay. Celiac artery, hepatic artery, isn't it? All these are possibly uh, signs of inoperability. Hmm? So, what is the apple base procedure? Okay. Apple B procedure. Um, don't it is a procedure you do in this power body and tail pancreatic malignancy where it is partly infiltrating the celiac artery. You resect the celiac artery. <laughs> Okay, you, mm -hmm. you resect the deep celiac artery and divide it distal to the origin of the, sorry, not celiac, celiac artery is divided and the uh, gastrointestinal artery is ligated distal to the origin of the hepatic artery, from proper hepatic artery. So that the conduit is coming from superior mesenteric artery upwards. It's called the apple by apple B procedure. Okay. So commonly done in case of say, distal pancreatectomy. What is the RAMPS procedure, RAMPS? Radical anti-grade modular pancreatic splenectomy. What is that? Anyway, leave it. That's okay. If you do. so you do a distal pancreatectomy, at least know that. You read about all these RAMS procedures, mm -hmm. Apple B procedures, and all these things. Okay. Mm -hmm. If it is just what you do. Arising from the posterior wall of the stomach. What do you do? What is the treatment of choice for GIST? Sir, uh, radiotherapy. Radiotherapy, sir. No. Radiotherapy. Excision, wide excision. Yes, it is. You don't even have to do a gastrectomy. How much margin you need in wide excision of GIST? Sir, in uh, stomach, uh, 5 centimeters, sir. Nothing like that. There is no fixed margin. You need to get only margin negative margin. Excision. Margin negative, wide excision. Okay. So no need for any proper gastrectomy if it is removable by wide excision. Okay. Will you do a lymphadenectomy in GIST? 
not sure no because gist is uh, will not spread to uh, lymph nodes so no role for lymphadenectomy all you need is a wide accession of the stomach with the gist okay, no need for a lymphadenectomy that's it right okay okay i think we will i think we got a message you have to stop in 5 minutes 10 minutes i think it's time is up yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> so some of aradhya should improve a lot you have to read about the subject or the paper that you are presenting the mass something all the differential diagnosis and other things which you have mentioned you must read them and then start there are some smaller very silly uh, mistakes you have committed we expect that that will be known to all post college students one or two were really disheartening to me also please read up well prepare well and sir, i i I'll, i'll request him not to read the reports yeah and that don't build up your story after help. writing the heading you have written just, the heading and started writing it yes the yes yes just just go go absolutely blank just take the history think of the possible causes of the symptoms and Re, uh, the region which you are examining what organs comes anatomical and physiological disturbances you just correlate and that, that this is how you improve and this should be a routine not for round days one case or case presentation this should be a routine for all patients admitted uh, and, and and you will be absolutely fine no problem you should show a awesome. lot of hesitancy in case presentations you only come in subjects yes yes that, to keep on that also requires that... a great courage on uh, yeah. uh, him i think yeah. it's okay sir i think it's okay he has done well no problem okay. he can understand his tendency because it happens it happens in a now we can prove purely understand this is a case with our pgs also don't worry even yeah. even after yeah. getting yeah. ms or gold medalist can improve there is yes. always a uh, scope and of improvement no no right. with me the last, sir he is there with me for last three weeks only yeah i see that he will improve don't worry don't uh, he is all right he is the first time maybe after many two years he is proceeding yes, yes. today so yes yes no problem do it regularly do it regularly every day mm -hmm. you will no problem okay as sir mentioned you be only logical in your approach there's nothing you no know, man you don't have to be superhuman to present it yes absolutely just present whatever what analyze the history analyze the clinical presentation and you form a, a reasonable diagnosis whether it's wrong or right doesn't yes. matter but if you the reasonable limits no problem okay okay so don't worry you done well don't worry next time you'll be even better okay thank you sir Okay. 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 Do you have any doubts or anything to be clarified? No, no. <laughs> Don't. Uh, I thank uh, all the faculty for this evening. Lakshman Prasad sir, Hari Das sir, Navin Sharma had to deal in between. Good to see Hitesh and Darya sir. Everyone contributing. Uh, Emant Kumar sir. Uh, thank you for joining us. we have uh, we hitesh sir thank you sir thank and you. Um, kanna sir any comments sir before we close i think kanna sir is unavailable so with the permission of the faculty we call this session a close special uh, thanks to you kanagwel sir you are you are from word go in your car seat and it's 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 a great attitude and dedication thank you sir thank you very much he, he sent, he sent next me week will be on oral cancer any pg who is interested can reach out to me sir i request all the faculty i have uh, i am planning for three types of oral cancer in one go tongue cheek and uh, like all the three cavities all the three major zones let me try that out uh, not otherwise two cases will be there see a tongue and cheek will be yeah. there or alveolus will be there we will try and do that sir thank you very much thank you, uh, thank you manohar i know you thank have been you, given very little time to prepare for this case thank you for accepting uh, our request and i thank dr kalarangni uh, i thank uh, vidyadhar kinhal sir and shrinivasan sir for providing this case thank you all the faculty thank you all the residents for joining this evening good thank night you. okay good thank night. you sir thank Bye. you sir thank you sir